is I have been here where we are in the game. And so I want to show you that. Would you like to see? Would you like to see the uh, Red Rock Amphitheater that I have seen and been to? Because I think that it would be an interesting thing to compare. Okay, so here we go. But here you have the advantage of this. All right. Let me see if I can line this up right, shall we? Just to try to help you be able to see what we're looking at here. I went in 26, 2017. I think I went to Denver for the one year anniversary of having having ended a relationship and decided I wanted to get away from what I knew at home and go explore and adventure a new in a new city. So look at this. Do you, do you see it? Hold on. Let me see if I can line it up just right. Like, can, can you see it? Like, here, hold on. We're gonna do this. I'm gonna run up here, hopefully not get murdered by things while I download another photo here from, uh, hold on. Sorry, I know this is maybe not what you, uh, not what you came here expecting to see, but you know what? This is what we're doing. And it's, it's, I think, a neat thing. I think it's really cool. Okay, so here we are, and, and, and we're on the stage part, looking up. All right, you ready for this one? Here we go. And if you're actually from the area, like, please forgive my tourism photos. These are photos that I took. I have actually been here, so I took these, I took these in 2017. Hold on, let's see if I can line this up better. But if you look, can you see? Can you see it's basically the same? Like, like this, this is the stage, which is where we are right here. Um, I have another one, and then I have some of the countryside, if you'd like to see it, um, around there. Let's see. What is this one? Is this, is this right? Yeah, that's one we just looked at. Hold on. So there's this one right here, which is, I don't know if you can see the side, um, but, uh, hold on. Let's see if I can line this up right. Okay. Watch this. Isn't that cool? Like, hold on, let's see if we can get get it lined up a bit ready, a bit a bit better. But, but you, you see, right? You see how accurate they made it? Like, that maybe is not exactly point by point exactly the same, but like, it's really close. And would you like to see some of the other photos from like that, that, that area, what it, what it looks like there? Um, cause I've got, here, let me download a couple more. Download that one. And this one. And it's just, it's really neat cause I don't know Colorado super well. I haven't spent a ton of time around there. Um, but, uh, and, and I haven't spent a, a ton of time. I mean like this trip that I'm showing you photos from is the only time that I've ever been to Colorado. I think, I think, um, but uh, I took a bunch of photos there because I thought it was so beautiful and distinctive looking. Um, I've got videos of me like out like singing to the rocks because that's what I do. Um, but I'm, I'm going to show you some of these. Okay, that, that should be enough to give you the impression of what it looks like. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to just go through some photos. Hi, hello, 
Welcome, yeah. <laughs> Rock music, haha, <laughs> see. Um, so like, this is the, like, the general landscape here. Let me, let me get the photo with the right size so you can see it. So this, this is what the region looks like. And these are photos that I took in 2017. Look at this. This is, this is, this is not a screenshot. I mean, it's not, I don't know if we could say, like, we can line this up with a particular rock formation in this vicinity. I don't know exactly where I was or how... Oh, shoot. What is that? Oh, those are those guys that I killed earlier. They came back. Um, well, we'll see if these guys come back. I don't think that Corruption Zones come back. Sorry, there's a, there's a thing walking around. Um, but yeah, so you can see um, that it, it looks like it's it's very much the same landscape. You know? Are we distinct? I don't know. I forgot to press the button to turn off the picture. But here's here's some more just some more pictures of the area. So you can see oh this one's small. Why is this one so small? Look at that. Doesn't this look like like look at this? And then like imagine or remember what it was like when we were like climbing around over there. Audio is desynced? It shouldn't be. It should be synced exactly. Um, wow, I even got photos of flowers that I took there, and they look familiar. But yeah, so so if you look at the um, at this right here, like there's like the like scrubby hills. Um. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. Sorry. Okay, re or transform reset. Sorry. Here we go. Look at this. Look at this and tell me this doesn't look familiar, <laughs> you know? Like, tell me that this isn't where we've been running around for the past however many hours in this game. You know, look at this. They did such an incredible job. And if you know this area better than I do, like actually know this area, then I suppose you can probably be like, well, they got these little details wrong or these little details right. But like... Just like, you know, look at this. Here we go. We got half and half. Half the game, half Lauren's photo. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that cool? Didn't they do an incredible job? Aren't you impressed? I'm impressed. And for anyone who's just now joining us, I will show you again, um, just um, for the, the best context of what we're doing right now. Um... Here you go. Here is Lauren's visit to the Red Rock Amphitheater in, uh, in 2017. Here's the amphitheater from the stage. Here's the stage. Oh, I'm standing on the wrong side. Hold on. I gotta be able to show you what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, hold on. All right, had to line this one up right. Sorry. All right, I think so. I think I've made my point probably, which is that this is really cool, and they did an, a phenomenal amount of detail work here. It's really, really, really impressive and beautiful. Um, so yeah. I was really excited when I realized what this was and that I'd been there and it adds a layer um, which I can only imagine if they had something like this set in for example Austin um, what that would feel like and how cool it is to have that extra layer of meaning and I don't actually know in the case of this this particular game in which the distance is such a thing um, story-wise um, from what happens in the real world. I don't know whether, other than the coolness of, of, oh, I've been there before, or the realization earlier, oh, I know this place, are we in Colorado? Um, other than finding that out earlier, I don't know that there's like an extra layer of meaning that's added. Um, if you're familiar with the place, which a lot of times with stories and things like that, if they're set in a real world area and you have familiarity with that area, with the people there, with the culture, with the situation there, you do have an extra layer of understanding. 
I don't know that that is the case in Horizon Zero Dawn because we are in a very far distant post-apocalyptic future. So I think it's mostly the coolness of it. Um, so I guess that must be Denver, right? Uh, I guess so. I have no sense of distance. Um, but I think it's fascinating and it certainly does root it in the realness of the world. And as much as I love the fact that fantasy and science fiction allow you to explore real world issues. Um, oh, horses. Hello. Um, as much as I love that they allow you to explore real world issues in secondary worlds so that it's kind of safer for people to engage with those concepts without um, feeling threatened or, or, or so by it. Um, hi, Friendly Shade. Oh my god. Is that a reference to Hades? Because if so, um, if that's so, the, the Friendly Shade is, the Friendly Shade is, is, a, is, a, is a friend. Very welcome here. Um, I mean, because it's in the name, friend, Friendly Shade. I don't know. <laughs> Look, okay. Have I been there? Because there's a convoy. Um, sorry, I got distracted. Um, but no, so as much as I like the fa- as, as much as I love the element of science fiction and fantasy that lets you have the safe distance between you, the reader, and the real world issues that are being addressed through making something fantasy, I think that the fact that Horizon Zero Dawn is so deeply, deeply grounded in our real world is one of the strengths of the storytelling in this game. It's incredible. I think it's really, really, really cool. <laughs> Because you can do things kind of halfway, and I think that they could lose a lot of power, but if you lean all the way in like they have, I don't know, that's pretty incredible. A new quest. I want to go there. What's, what's that? That's an interesting color. That doesn't look like it's supposed to look like that. Sorry, folks. I got distracted. Oh no, there's birds. This section looks like I probably don't want to go here yet, but I do. I want to go here. I want to see what these hermit crabs are up to. <sighs> Sorry, I keep getting distracted. And then that looks like that's a bandit camp, and I want to do that, but it's probably too high level because the place that I'm at right now is slightly higher level than I am, and I should probably progress the plot instead of just go gallivanting about randomly. Ooh, corrupted zones. No open activities. Okay, so I've got those. Well done. Okay, so the map is ever so slightly 3D. It's really neat. Okay, inventory, what did I get? Resources. I got a watch, which I can sell for some metal shards. I got a bellowback lens, but not a bellowback heart, so I can't get the very, very good stealth armor that I want yet. Fox bone, machine core medium, selling for metal shards. Okay. And did you see, like, I have more room, though, because I crafted my thing to be bigger? Treasure boxes. Oh, I can't take those. Uh, machine scavenger box. Shall we open one of these and see if maybe we can, uh, we can get a bellow back heart? Oh, that's pretty good. Oh no, I can't. Okay. Well, that's fine. Must be open box holding an unknown quantity of items. So who knows what it is? It's money. Okay. Oh, my traps are full. I am not very good at opening up my stuff. As you might have noticed, this is in fact a problem that I have. Oh, that's right, those ruins. Thank you. I was going to. I got distracted, Blue Glass, because I was talking about storytelling and the decisions that they've made in this game, um, which, which I know is the thing that I keep going back to. Um, but that's because it's so interesting. Uh, I really want to go up here, but I really suspect that that's a bad idea. I bet it's a bad idea. It's just that it's self-contained, but I guess I can always teleport later, right? <sighs> I want to do that. I want to do that. Yeah, that's Denver. Yeah, because there's the Denver Stadium. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then the Red Rock Amphitheater is right here. Um... So, oh, I've got some quests. No. No. Oh, there's a town. There's some stuff. There's another corruption zone. There's a vantage point. Oh, I want the vantage points. I want the corrupt. Oh. 
Level 20. It's nice that these tell you what level you should be to get there. Uh, I probably should go do some of those things. <laughs> oh, I'm super, super into the story. Don't get me wrong, the gameplay is fun and interesting, and I used to be a person who was terrible at gameplay, and apparently I am no longer a person who is terrible at gameplay. Um, playing games has unlocked that, and potentially ADHD meds have made it so that it is easy for my brain to process what I see on screen quickly um, and not get overwhelmed as much. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you're interested in the story and stuff, please pull up a chair and join. Um, as you can probably you can probably tell from this where we are. Um, as far as the main plot goes, we are still pursuing this quest line. Yes, this game has a lot to offer, and they did a really good job of making it seamless, and you can also engage with the story as much or as little as you like. Like, I don't know. So, we were talking about, just to remind myself that Blue Glass saying, I thought I might poke my head into this area here. Maybe I will. That quest, however, was a substantially higher level. Oh wow, that is way down that way. Well, that's fine. That's fine. We could teleport there, maybe. I don't know. We could ride a horse, knock everything over in our path, try not to die. Um... That way? Okay. This might be a bad idea. Uh... Okay, so I did that. Um, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something. I got distracted from what I was saying. What was I saying, folks? I'm sorry. There's too much going on. Um... Okay, so what have I done? I'm sorry, I'm kind of trying to mentally backtrack through what I was saying. I talked about the storytelling, so I'm talking about things. Oh, yeah, so, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. There's another box? There's another box? Where is that other box? There's a thing that I haven't seen. Also, do you hear this music? Do you hear this music? Where is it? Where is it? Oh! This data point. Folks, there's a data point. Oh, I'm glad that I stayed around here. Chocolate box log. Let's see this, folks. All right, so we've come to the conclusion that I will read these out loud. And if there is a way to be over the top and melodramatic with it, I will do that. Um, but apparently I can do narration. The first chapter of Darkness and Starlight, by the way, my Final Fantasy VI audiobook fanfic, the audiobook version, is now up on YouTube. If you haven't seen it yet, it's there, so you can judge for yourself whether I can do narration or not. Chocolate Box Log is such an interesting name for this. Oh, so it's to Jesse fans. So I wonder then if these are grouped together, because um, I don't know if there is actually anything grouped together here. Um, but, uh... Like, uh, if these are, are in chunks for a reason. Like, so the Jesse fans one is very, like, <sighs> superficial, like, first world problems sort of thing. Immediately before the special orders, which is about civilian warfare. Um, and so, let's see, what time are, does this, does this doesn't have a, this doesn't have a date. And this one doesn't have a date. I know that because we looked at that. Um, but it's kind of like, is this, like reaching a breaking point, kind of. I, I don't know. So let's see. The, the placement of the chocolate box log between these two is very interesting, though, especially because, like, I really... I just really want to know. I just really want to know everything. So let's do it, shall we? It's an interesting name. Data Corruption Minimal. <sighs> Your latest meaningful con conversation on chocolate box. Was this the love connection moment you'll tell your grandkids about? You can opt out of receiving these logs at any time by editing your chocolate box profile. So it's a dating app. Okay, oh god, I have to do voices. I can't do voices. That I can't do. Okay, Serafina says, hey, Winky. Lars says, hey, how's, how's it going? Serafina says, fine, bored though. Lars says, yeah, Wednesday nights. Serafina says, you're really cute, Lars. And Lars says, thanks, you too. Serafina says, hey, do you want to chat with me in my private salon? Lars says, oh, you're a honeypot. Oh my god, that is extremely, that feels very, uh, Feels very real. Okay. Haha, ha, what? No silly. Okay, if you're not a honeybot, tell me about the most earth-shattering work of art you've ever seen. You're funny, Lars. 
Tell me about the last time you experienced heartache. You're funny, Lars. Tell me about an experience your friends enjoyed, but about which you were ambivalent. <laughs> Holy crap, you're not even a good honeybot. You suck. <laughs> this is really interesting. Yeah, so it's a pun. It's a play on, on honeypot. <sighs> Trying to entice someone. <laughs> Lars is actually quite funny. So, Lars may not be anybody of any significance, and Serafina obviously isn't. Um, so, so, hey. One of the fun things about, uh, I guess, found object storytelling, which is what this does, Tallis Principle did, um, there was one other, because I made a note to myself in the YouTube archive of this video to talk about the storytelling style in this game and how it's similar in some ways that may not immediately be apparent, but, but if you think about it, it's true. Um, some ways to, to other games that I've played, like Teller's Principle. Um, I don't remember what it is, but I call it a, kind of like a found object storytelling. Because, so, so a found, found object, um, like uh, collage, is like you take a bunch of different things unrelated things and you put them all together and so it's not like I'm going to get all of the things that are similar in some capacity you get a bunch of different stuff and you put it all together into a collage which is kind of inherently a commentary on what is available to you for you to be able to put it in the collage what you find interesting that you have chosen to put in the collage and then whatever the collage itself is supposed to represent or be whether it's artistic or you know um, elements of something. Maybe Transistor. Maybe Transistor is the one. Because um, Transistor does also have bits and pieces of news and things to some degree. Um, but specifically the Tallest Principle. And I'll try to avoid spoiling the Tallest Principle because I think you should play it. I don't even like uh, puzzle games, but it's one of my favorite games I've ever played. It's incredible. Or you could just watch my old stream of it if you really feel like sitting down and watching me be really bad at spatial reasoning puzzles. But I got better. I got better. Um, so when you have a found object storytelling experience, in this case it's found objects, but they're actually created objects. So there's even more intentionality beyond the layer of what do you choose to include out of what's presented to you. It becomes what do you, what do you put in, and then why do you put it there? Um, and so obviously this is funny. It's a little moment of humor. The Jesse fans one is also funny because of the way it's written. Um, this is funny because it's relatable. Any of us who have been on dating apps at any point have had not this, I, I haven't had this experience. I think queer ladies are less likely to have this kind of experience. Um, but, uh, uh, but, like, we've had, we've all had some sort of thing being weird, and you've heard your friends who've told stories about things. So this is, like, kind of a relatable, normal, like, we don't need extra context about what's going on in the world to understand this, to relate to this, to know what it means, to, uh, to, to see parallels between this and real world experiences. So this is one of the most accessible bits that we've retrieved in this entire game because it doesn't hinge really on anything else like you immediately can see oh chocolate box is a dating app and as soon as you know it's a dating app everything else on here could be set in the real world right now here and now this could be contemporary to us um so why is it in the game why indeed and this is something that may wind up being proven wrong because we don't know where the story is going to take us. Um, and we don't know for sure what happened back in the day. We have some things that have been presented to us and a lot of things that I have connected some dots. I have drawn in lines and pencil. Those lines may not actually exist. We may find out more and invalidate all of my thoughts and theories and expectations and so on. Although I did have a hole in one prediction about a very big thing in Hades last week. And so I feel that I'm kind of on a roll. Maybe, maybe I'm getting a little cocky here. But do you remember last week I pointed out, and I think I, I, think I might have talked about this the previous stream too, um, 
the data point that talked about um the data point that talked about the ghost in the machine where the person thinks that it's a human ghost in the machine and i was like no i actually think that that may be the sapience of the artificial intelligence that you could sense that you could detect um and that i think that we're going to have conflicts extra layers of conflict not just between humans and corporations um but humans and the artificial intelligences and it, it may seem kind of funny for me to say that when like literally the conflicts that we've had in this game have been primarily a human versus robots versus machines so it may seem like well yes obviously lauren the story is going to be about humans versus machines literally that's what you've spent the past number of hours playing yes but these are these are mind mindless automatons following their programming i am able to pick them off i i did this the data point in the red rock amphitheater uh, i did that vantage point earlier than i should have because i kind of cheated a little bit and their ai couldn't handle it and that seems to be fitting for them they're not smart or like clever thinking for themselves like they don't seem to have like full fully functional minds they have programming uh, uh, protocols that they can follow. Um, yes, there's been some humans versus humans with the cultists too, but I'm disregarding that because we also know in the history that there also was history of humans versus humans um, to some degree. Um, but I, there's, there's a difference between what I had originally thought, which was that humans set up these machines to be the way they are and to fight us and maybe they messed things up too now that we know that like the cultists they're going after the woman who Aloy might be the clone of um like there's there's some of that so it's like it's possible the humans more recently have meddled but that it, my expectation was that humans in the past had set up the machines that we have now with protocol that they are fault is protocol the right word i'm not a programmer so if there's a better word for that please let me know um but um but they, they've been following that and so, yes, there are antagonists in a way, but it's more like they're like obstacles than antagonists, if that makes sense. Like an obstacle is a thing that stands between you and something. An antagonist is something that's actively working to undermine your success. And these these machines that we're encountering aren't that. Um, so so it is, it is kind of like man versus nature but not just that it's man versus nature that has been created by man so even then its roots go back to man um and i was i felt pretty comfortable with that being the way we were going and i don't even think i really super stopped to question that until we got to our first cauldron and the cauldron as i've said before but i'll say this for the benefit of those of you who may be joining me for the first time and haven't heard me ramble about this and for those of you who have i appreciate your patience but the cauldron looked like it was made not with humans in mind. Like when I first went there, I was like, they're not gonna pull aliens into the story. That's too much. That's too much. You can't have all of these other things and also aliens. Also because it's so relatable because because they've had so many real world conflicts, um, having something from outside of our world and unconnected to humanity in any capacity feels like it would cheapen that to some degree. Like they've made the conscious decision to make the conflicts a direct descendant of the real world conflicts that we're living through today um, and therefore they've removed the distance that is why you would want to put robots or fantasy things um, into something and uh, and I, I I don't think that that would fit so I would have be I, I will be disappointed how's this I will be disappointed if it turns out there are aliens that to me would be a bad decision and they, they're very good writers, so they could probably convince me that it works, but I would still say overall I don't feel that that's consistent with everything that they've set up and the choices that they've made on a macro level as storytellers. Um, but, but, um, there was something inherently alien about the map and the design of the cauldron that was not human it was not for humans it was not by humans like maybe it accommodates humans secondarily but it is built for something else and we see a lot of robots in there and it's building robots it seems to be all about the robots and so that's the first time that it occurred to me that maybe these robots 
have sapience themselves, not not sentience. I've been corrected that I mean sapience here. Um, so like like capable of like perceiving the self and having complicated thought and things like that. Um, this is one of the first times that it occurred to me that the robots machines might not necessarily the animal machines that we're fighting, but machines in this story at some point may be making conscious decisions that make them antagonists. They may be an active force in the world rather than weapons and things built by humans. They may be their own selves participating in the story on that level. And it was really, really disconcerting because I had gotten really comfy sitting in these assumptions that I was making. This is the danger of making assumptions like I do. Um, <laughs> The danger of making assumptions like this is that um, is that they are assumptions, and so they might get blasted in like just just obliterated by another revelation, and that may be what has happened here. So it was a little bit jarring, but in a good way. I had to reevaluate how I thought about everything. So now I view everything kind of in the context of okay, if and again this ties back to the Nora creation myth. Um, where we had the, the, the metal devil, which I had assumed was actually human-led, that perhaps actually the metal devil itself was the antagonist and humans were pulled into that, but it was a machine that was the antagonist. And I know that I'm summarizing stuff that I've said before, but it's because I'm kind of like appending new bits to it, and that's leading to this seemingly inconsequential little bit of comedy. So if... The ro if the if the machines if the if, if if the artificial intelligences are becoming more complex, um, that somebody at some point senses like ghosts in the machine. If they start to take issue with what humans are doing, what humans are doing to them, the fact that they've been created as weapons and are being used as weapons and made to fight humans' wars, um, and then perhaps turn on humanity or something like that, which would be interesting. Um, as not necessarily the direction that I thought that the story would go. Um, and I apologize to this story about the fact that I can't keep trying to figure out which one of these existing science fiction patterns it fits, but I'm sorry, that's just how it is. When you create a story like this, you're going to be building on all the other stories that exist. Like that's just that's just part of part of the way a genre like this works. Um, and while I'm not an expert on science fiction, I'm reasonably well read. <laughs> reasonably familiar with science fictional tropes. Um, so all that to say, um, this is, of all of the little bits, this one doesn't have any major significance on its own. It is flavor, it is basically flavor text, flavor text. Like it's even more for flavoring than for content than most of these. There's a few of them where I'm like, oh, this exists to kind of show us how the um, focus is. Uh, sorry, I'm like poking the side of my head because that's where Aloy's focus is. Is on the side of her head? I, I don't know. <laughs> but to see how people have really like embraced the virtual reality or augmented reality of having a focus. Um, so it establishes that world building. This doesn't even do that. All this does, all this does is be funny and familiar. It has no world building whatsoever. So why put it in the game? Because here we have, presumably, a human interacting with an artificial intelligence that is not sapient and emphasizing that disconnect between those two and also defining what it means to be human. Tell me about the most earth-shattering work of art you've ever seen. Tell me about the last time you experienced heartache. Tell me about an experience your friends enjoyed but about which you were ambivalent, so that's just feelings. But those first two? This is about caring about things. This is about appreciating art. If somebody is trying to distinguish a person from a machine, I mean, we can talk um, talk about um, uh, Philip K. Dick here if we really want to. And the, uh, uh, gosh, I'm sorry, I'm getting tangled up because the movie and the book have different names, and I believe they have different names for the, it's not Reploids, uh, 
You know what I'm talking about. Somebody please fill this in for me. <laughs> Replicants! Thank you, Chrono. Replicants, Blade Runner, or um, is that do Android's dream of electric sheep? Yes. Um, which I have read and seen the movie. Um, so, uh, so there's questions there, kind of. Like, how do we distinguish between machines and, and humans? Um, and the machines themselves don't even know sometimes if they're machine or human. Um, and it has really interesting, really interesting questions about that. And, and it comes down to compassion. Um, not foolproof, and that's where some of the complexity of the story goes, but it seems like, at least in the book, one of the, one of the underpinnings of humanity that the machines lack is compassion. Um, so in a way, Dick is kind of defining what does it mean to be human? Well, to have the capacity for compassion for other living things. That's, that's what it means to him to be human, even if he's not sure about the rest of the answer. That one he's got. Um, and, uh, and so the questions that Lars is asking Serafina here, just trying to see if this is just a, a really bad bot on his dating app, but he's basically doing the equivalent of asking those questions from Blade Runner or Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep to determine is it a replicant or is it a human? It's the same kind of questions. And I'm sorry, I'm friendly shade. Like, um, if you have any questions about like, like if I'm not being clear, please feel free to ask. Um, and I'll, I'll do my best to answer and try to make it, I wanna try to make things like, I, I wanna try to make it so people can understand what the thing is that I'm trying to say. That's on me to be understood. Um, but, uh, but also, like, I do appreciate, since you've played this game before, I appreciate that you haven't jumped in to tell me these things. Like, I appreciate you're letting me figure it out, because that's, obviously, this is one of the things that I really, ex really enjoy. There's, like, the puzzle of how am I going to fight this particular setup of machines, which is a very fun puzzle to solve. But I also really like this. And so the point of the chocolate box log existing in this game they chose to write this and they chose to include it because they want to even if this never actually ties into anything else directly it is reinforcing humanity versus machines and how do we define and distinguish humanity and when does artificial intelligence not actually have that similarity and when does it become close enough? What would it take for it to be close enough to be indistinguishable? Um, and so that's what this is doing. Even if this has no other relevance to anything else, it is putting that feeling, that thought into our head. It is, it is shaping how we think about what we're experiencing in the story. Which is neat, isn't it? Because it's also, it's also funny. It's funny, like this is funny. Honeybot, it's a great wordplay, very clever. Um, there's a little bit of beautiful writing, and uh, you know me, I'm a sucker for beautiful writing. Just tell me about the most, most earth-shattering work of art you've ever seen. Tell me about the last time you experienced heartache. Like, that just feels really, like, those are words that feel a bit powerful to say, and I like that. <sighs> and then I love contrasting that, the beauty of those feelings, those sentiments of Lars reaching into himself and saying, Prove to me you're human. Answer these questions about humanity. And then him concluding, holy crap, you're not even a good honey bot. You suck. Like the tonal shift there is really funny. This is something that I really enjoy doing because I can sound like the guy, I can sound like the person writing, tell me about an experience your friends enjoyed but about which you were ambivalent. Like, I can write like that. And then to, 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 to drop from that into something slangy, like, holy crap, who cares about capitalization? You suck. Like, that, there's like extra comedy with that contrast, and I really like it. Um. Yeah, I suppose you're right, Sleeping Bee. Basically, Lars is running a Turing test on Serafina. That's because that's a test to determine if it is an artificial intelligence or if it's a living intelligence by our standards, like human. Um, and, uh, like, that's really interesting. So, yeah, so, so here we have a Turing test. That's, that's, that's such a good way of putting it. That's so correct. This little bit of comedy is a Turing test that probably has no overarching consequences 
Unless we encounter Serafina later and Serafina is an artificial intelligence that's learning or something like that, which could happen. So this could tie into something bigger. But I think it's just to be like, hey, Turing tests, let us think about, let us think about defining humanity and the difference between humanity and virtual things and the, how annoying it is when we have a bad artificial intelligence. We have a really strong native reaction to that. But how would we react to a very good and convincing one? Mm, a lot of fiction doesn't think we would, re we would react so well. Um, some think we would. I've written some stories on this that may or may not ever see the light of day. See if I ever pick up my robot story again. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. Um, but yeah, so there you go. There's our Turing test. But it, I mean, it, it, it is funny, just like, even if you don't stop to think about that, because I don't think you're supposed to think about this one. I think you're supposed to, f to laugh, have a little feeling about it. And especially because it's positioned by the, by the vantage point, the vantage points are very serious and heart wrenching in their own way. Um, having a little comic relief, nicely placed, nicely timed. So you, this kind of shapes your feelings, but it also shapes the stories that you're like the things that you're touching in this game. So that shapes how you are interacting with story in general. So there you go. How's that? Welcome to Lauren the Flute streams video games. This is what we do here, folks, for better or for worse. God, the music is really cool. Shall we go to the ruins and see if we die? Oh, maybe we should. Maybe we should. I don't think I'm gonna go into the mountains there. Thank you, Kenny. I appreciate your, your, your appreciation there. Yeah, we might go die in the ruins. Watch me, like, do some stuff I'm not supposed to be able to do first, though. That would be fun. You've only seen one vantage point? Wow, the vantage story! Like, okay. I'm so I love Aloy as a character already. I love how stubborn she is. I love how compassionate she is. Where? What? 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 Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Um. <clears throat> Sorry. The music got really ominous for a moment. I had to get to safety grass. You know how it is. Safety grass. Oh man. So, the, so I love Aloy as a character. She's very many things that I like in characters. I'm interested in her emotional story. I'm interested in the Nora. I'm interested in uncovering what's going on with the, with the killers, with the cultists, um, and who the, the woman that Aloy seems to be a clone of, and all of these things. Um, like, I'm really interested in all of that. Um, and I'm curious about the overarching what happened in the world before the apocalypse hit and things like that. Um, but I'm also really excited, like really, really excited about the vantage point stories. Like those have really captivated me. I know there's a little bit more electronic sound to some of the music in this area than we've heard, even the non-robot stuff, I think. What is that? Is that anything? No, I guess it's not. It's like, there's like some drone sounds that I guess are probably not mechanical. Sorry. You're gonna have to deal with me sort of simultaneously trying to talk through big story stuff and trying not to die, and I get very distracted. A lot. So sleeping the all we're up to is this conversation that we just had, where we where we got that data point, uh, the chocolate box log, um, which is the the Turing test data point. Um, and that's really all we've done. We looked at some photos. We looked at photos of the Red Rock Amphitheater that I took when I went to Denver. In a I can feel the ground twenty twenty seventeen. We, we, we compared photos to the stage that as, as we were standing on it. It was very exciting. Wait, hold on. What clothes am I wearing? I don't think I'm wearing my quiet person clothes. I think I'm wearing my corruption clothes. Let's find out. Inventory. Outfit. 
Yeah. Okay, let's move back to our silent hunter. All right. Much better. All right. What do we got going on here? We've got a bunch of those guys, a bunch of watchers, no watchers. So we'll go, we'll go, around this, we'll go around this way, maybe. Hold on, where are we? What are we doing? Oh, it's a watcher site. That's why there's so many watchers. I see, I see you, buddies. Well, what if I just cut through here instead? I'm just gonna cut through here instead. That sounds like a good idea. Let's not go mess with the watchers. We're gonna do this. All right, we'll be a lot quieter because we are in our special quiet clothing. Very nice stuff. And I'm going to actually try to gather roots now that I have a bigger inventory space. All right. Hold on. I tend to go the stealth route a lot. Just to... Oh, that's the wrong button. To warn you all. Who maybe don't know. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, hello. Oh, those guys. Those... Oh, sorry. Hold on. Let's see if I can charge my battery. Ugh. I should have put this on when we were talking. We had talked a bit. So I think those are the shell walkers that killed me last time. They've got a lightning gun. That's not so good. But this is the way I want to go. So yeah, I'm just going to cut across this field here and hope for the best. You don't see me, folks. You don't see me. There's nothing to see here. I'm just going to... You guys are getting a cool sound effect. So I have an extremely short cable for my charging cable here. Like, extremely short. So I'm having to hold this at a terrible angle. Oh my goodness! Why is there a fire pillow pack? Why is there a fire pillow pack? Why are there so many robots oh my god why is there a fire bellow back so we have a name for those guys on this stream are there two are there three so so we call those guys something we uh we call them noposauruses and that's what we're gonna do we're kind of just nope out of here. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Maybe I should go fight those watchers instead. Oh. Oh no. Let's just not. Let's just not. How does that sound? What if no? What if no? What if no Noposauruses? Just, just uh-uh. There are no Noposauruses. Just nope. Nope. Also nope. Nothing to see here, buddy. All good. All good. Nothing to see. You didn't hear anything. You didn't say anything, though. No? What is that? No, that. Oh, dead, dead watcher. I guess that makes sense. God, there's so many of them. Holy crap. I, I guess I... You know what I could do? You know what I could do? I could take one of them over and send it to go fight the rest. I could do that. Oh, please don't see me. Nothing to see here, buddy. Nothing to see here. Yeah, I think if it were just a single Noposaurus, it might be okay. But it's multiple Noposauruses, and there's a bunch of other scary things in the vicinity. And I don't like that. Look at all these guys. I mean, I could just try taking these guys out. Like, that's a thing that I could do. You. Can you get closer? Can I override you? Maybe? Why are you searching so hard? Oh. Be fascinating. Oh shoot! Well, that happened. Okay.
Please don't wake the Bellowbacks. It is hard to hold the controller at this angle. Oops, hold on. Oh, hello. Whew. Okay. Well, that was all right. Uh, well, we got some experience. We got some experience, folks. So that's that's good, right? Should have brought a cart. Okay, hold on. Let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, inventory modifications. I can take some of these and turn them into... How do I do that? Disassemble. Sorry. I should actually put some of these into my weapons and stuff. I have one in. It doesn't seem like it does very much. That's much, much better. Okay, hold on. Okay. Aloy, smash. I do smash things a lot. No, it's true. I... Is there anybody else around here to be mad at me? There's a dead body over there. Oh, something's approaching. And I'm visible. I thought something was approaching. No, there's just a bunch of animals. Oh! Those guys. Did I hurt them? Why are they taking some damage? Did I, did I drop something that blew up? Where are you guys going? Uh, hold on. There. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. But I'm going here. Hold on, let me get this. And then we're gonna continue going the right direction, I suppose. Do I hear more robots? Yeah, yeah, I hear more robots. Let's not, let's not deal with that. Oh, jeez. We're gonna go that way. Not that way. No, we're not. No. Am I going back? Is this the same way I came from? Oh my god. It totally is, isn't it? Alright, sorry folks. I was trying to, like, talk to you about things, but I got distracted. And I'm trying not to die. Yes, Piggy, that's right. You heard me. Anyway, hi, Brenomania. I'm sorry. I was not very, very responsive when you popped in, my friend. I was trying not to die. Which I'd really rather not die. I'm pretty sure that if I fight one of those guys one on one, I'm pretty sure I'm going to die. I don't want to do that. How am I going to get across here, though? Oh, man carefully is what we're gonna do. Please don't see me, please don't see me, please don't see me, please don't see me. I don't want to be seen by you. Nope, 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 nope. What is that? Nothing to see here, guys. Nothing to see here for anybody. Nope. Oh, I guess I don't really need those. Hopefully I don't die because of it. All right. Okay, so we're invisible. Back still over there. Nope, 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 nope. Anything else in the vicinity of where we're trying to go? It's a watcher. Just a watcher. Destroyed watchers, not usually worth a whole lot. Okay, we're gonna just keep going this way. I don't ever follow the road. We can go get Pringles another time. Pringles, if you don't know, is the name of my horse. Oh, hello. Okay, it's a bunch of the deer. The deer don't seem scary, but they will absolutely beat you up. I learned that the hard way. Hello, guys. Yeah, don't worry. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. You didn't see or hear anything. Look, look, see, see, not an idea, not a clue. Nothing bad, nothing weird, nothing scary. So we passed the Noposauruses and are just quietly 
carefully. Oh, I should heal. Oh, good point. What's over there? What is that? Did I see something? What do we got? What do we got? Just a watcher keeping an eye. I mean, it's a good idea to have somebody who can keep an eye on things. While you and your friends are scavenging for resources, I guess? Yeah, I do a lot of stealth. Except when I don't. I have two modes. Stealth assassination mode? And hit everything really hard in the face with my weapon mode. What are you? A grazer? A grazer? Destroyed watcher? I want to deal with some grazers. And do you have any friends nearby to hear you if I fight you? Who are going to be bad news? That's a question. Aloy did eat the berries. That's true. We got... We got stuck when I first started playing the game because my controller was broken and we didn't realize it, but it meant that when uh, when I was told to, to eat the berries, I was not capable of eating the berries because that button on my controller didn't work. Hold on. Okay. Yes, I know I'm very close to a bunch of these guys. I can tell, thank you. Oh, that's a turkey, not a person. <laughs> All right, uh, I really want to not have my controller be off to the side. I should have charged it in the week since we played last. All right, so how are we gonna get around these guys? I could fight them. I mean, I could if I wanted to. I guess I could override one of them. My overriding didn't work last time and I'm pretty sure that means that I, that's because I did something wrong. Like run right in front of them. Oh, I'm sorry, our Discord. Does somebody else have a link to the Discord for Friendly Shade? Because we have a channel on the Discord, yeah, where if you want to talk about the story things that I don't know, we have a special stream spoilers channel that I don't go to. So you can do that. And it will, uh, it, it is a place apparently where when everybody's all like stressed. Oh, grazers. I can override them if I don't spook them. Okay. All right. Aloy. Sorry. Um, yeah, and, and so that way apparently like when you're like all frustrated, like, oh my god, Lauren, what? Um, it's it's a it's a it's a stress relieving situation. How am I gonna get past these guys? Do I have to get past these guys? Why am why am I over here? Where am I trying to get to? Where am I where am I trying to go? Where am I trying to go? Did I did my No, that's the embrace. Right? That's the embrace. This is where I'm trying to go. Why did it change? Did it change? Did it lose track of where I was going? Oh no, it's trying to take me out to the road. Why would I want the road? I'm not gonna have any fewer robots on the road, am I? Hi, buddy. Let's see what that happens, or what that does. I don't know what that's gonna do. Are you just gonna chill, buddy? You just gonna chill? Uh... Okay. But now what? Now what? What's he gonna do? Is he gonna go beat some of them up? I really am curious. Are you gonna go fight your friends, buddy? What are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? You don't know. You look so confused. Why are you so confused, buddy? Okay. I want to go there. Oh, that's so far away. No, that's not the one I want to go to. Where's the one I want to go to? Where's the way I want to go? Hello? What's it? override a lot. It seems like it's communicating. It's curious. It's like, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, buddy? It's like, hey, you're an enemy. Wait. 
Wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, shoot. I thought I was in the grass, but I, was, I wasn't in the grass. What's it doing? Hold on. Sure, shoot. I did not realize I wasn't in grass. I thought I was invisible. So instead of attacking its, its friend that has lost its mind, it, it called to it and then it called out and it got mad and it went looking for me instead of trying to take its friend out. That's really interesting. So like it killed one other robot. Sorry, I'm, I, I, can't, I can't play the game at that angle. Okay, well, we're gonna just go this way then. Let's see if we can avoid robots this way. I'm just gonna play this like a stealth game. Like the stealth game that it is. Sometimes. You wanna go that way? Okay, I think I'm out of range of those guys. So I'm just gonna quietly stealth, 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 diddy stealth. So that was really interesting behavior. You know, like it seemed like it was like, it seemed like it asked its friend like, hey buddy, are you okay? And when its friend didn't respond, it was like, wait, something's not right with you. But instead of being like, well, fine, I'll take you down. It was like, who did this? Show yourself. Which, I don't know. I'm still kind of working through the world and the machines and who and what they are, you know? Let's get this. And then let's get out of here because I think that there's a watcher over there and I don't want to be seen by it. Where am I? Oh, shoot. Please don't see me. 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 Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here, buddy. Nothing to see here. Nope. I mean, I could have just teleported. All right. We're just gonna do this and hope for the best. How does that sound? Sound like a good idea? Ah, oh, that's a cliff with the water. That's fine. Who needs silence? Not me. Where am I going? Oh, do I wanna go this way? Is this the way to go? Where am I going? What am I doing? Why am I swimming through the rapids? I don't know. I don't know where I'm going, or what I'm doing. Where am I? Oh, it's my little camp! Oh, these are friends! Okay, hold on. Hold on. Why am I doing this? Just go up. Aloy, come on. Just bunny hop. Hop, hop, hop. Hello, friends. Okay. Do I have some stuff to sell, actually? I could go sell stuff. Yeah, let's go sell stuff. We'll do that. Is this the way? Hold on. Yeah, this is the way. We're gonna do it. Just gonna bring some robots right into your camp. Sorry, folks. All right, here we go. Hello, friends. And welcome to Trade with Merchants. Okay, sell. Resources, this is nothing but sell. This is nothing but sell? Okay. I have so much of this stuff. So much of this stuff that I can't do anything with because I might be able to turn it into something later. Okay. That I sell. Something else here I can sell, I swear. Something I thought there was a sellable. That's a sellable, okay. Oh, that's worth a lot, wow. Okay. Rare machine parts, greatly valued by merchants. Okay. 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 All right. That'll do. That'll do. We got some monies. I really wanted to send those other guys here. The ones that were getting the, um, the what's it called? The, the dream, dream willow. Oops, that was maybe not my best idea. 
I'm being stealthy. I'm being secretive. Corruption! That's the one I want, so I can make anti-corruption potions. Oh, this... This is playing Aloy's theme. That, um, that string instrument is playing Aloy's theme. I know that because I sing along with it sometimes when I load the stream. But... Yeah, I know I'm hardly hurting for inventory space, but... Oh, I suppose I should sell some other things. I suppose I I could sell my... What are they called? Oh, I don't want to go there. I'm getting there. Oh, I could sell the... What are they called? Things that you stick in things. Things that you stick in things. Do I really want to be going this way? This is really what I want to be doing. Yeah, oh, I'm almost there. Oh, I'm almost there. Yeah, let's do it. Every time we... Modifications, thank you. Every time we run through the city, we get we have a higher likelihood of maybe being able to find another data point, which I'm super motivated to try to find. All right. So there's some grazers. Cool. All right, that's fine. That's fine, we can handle it. Oh look, stoplight. Okay. Oh. Yes, yes, I know there's robots. I know, I can hear. They sure are mad. Uh-huh, uh-huh. How am I gonna get across there without getting somebody else mad? Who are you? Scrappers. I can take scrappers now though. That's the thing is I can, I can fight these things that I, 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 last time I came through here, I was way more scared of scrappers. Like, maybe I should still be scared of scrappers, but I fought a bunch of them. So I feel like I'm okay. You know? Sorry, folks, for my very undignified, super slow person walk through here. Wait. What do we got? A bunch of animals? Okay. We seem to not have robots in the in the vicinity. Cool. I will take it. Building up experience. Oh, yes, fighting them we do get experience. But I also get player experience in addition to character experience. What do we Hi Peggy. Have I been here? Because that's the tall neck. That's the thing. Have I been through this very specific area here? There's a bunch of grazers and stuff there. What's in here, though? I can't see anything. It's the time of day. Oh my god, there's a bunch of you guys. Maybe I don't want to be here. Maybe I don't want to be here. Look at how many of them there are. What's that? Yeah, I mean, it's just a bunch of watchers, actually. A couple of grazers. A bunch of watchers. Uh, that's fine. We're gonna go through here. But it's interesting because there's torches, which indicate to me that there's humans that come through here, you know? And I can't help but wonder. You know? What are you guys digging? What are you getting? What are you trying to... What is going on here? What is this? What is this? Is this a church? It has a big circular window. Sorry. Oh, hello. There's some scrappers gonna come out and try to take the stuff from here. Because I feel like... Whenever I see one of those, I'm like, oh, scrappers are gonna come looking for it. What do we got? Am I, am I, I am, I am invisible. I mean, I could take these guys out. I could drop them. I could, I could equip. Oh, I need to make weapons. I need to make arrows. Good thing I checked, huh? Oh, am I, what am I, what am I out of? What am I out of? Oh, oh my God, I, okay. I used a lot of Terra Blast arrows on something. I'm gonna have to get something, okay. 
All right. This is the first time I've actually run out of a gear. How interesting. Okay. I, I've never run out of um, stuff before. So let's see. I'm gonna have to shoot one of you guys. Maybe. I want to. I'm gonna take them out. I can take them. I can get experience. In fact, who else is nearby? Oh, there's a fox. Hello, fox. Raccoon! Oh, excuse me. It's those grazers. Okay, come on, buddies. I want to be able to hit you in the eyeball. But I can't do that if you're not facing me. Um, that's no fun. Anyway, sorry, folks, if I'm being super slow here and if it's not interesting. Ah. What are you doing, buddies? What are you doing, buddies? Not this time. <laughs> amazing. Amazing, amazing. Okay. Cool. Where's your friend? Where is your friend? There's your friend. Anybody else walking around over here that I'm gonna have to take out? You. Get over here. Yeah, no, it's okay. Sorry, sorry, no. I realize that that's not entirely intuitive and that's something I should probably say when I know there's folks who are joining us for the first time. That I, I have a I have a chat hat that I put on that is very colorful and stripey when I don't know. Okay, this guy's gonna come here. Okay, come on. Okay. Alright. Alright, I think we're alright. I'm gonna go over there and get that. Because apparently I need parts and I don't know how to get those parts, so I'm just gonna try to get those parts off of killing dinos. You know? Like, when in doubt, kill dinos. Right? Right? There's somebody that I took down, I guess? That's the one I took down? Did I take that one down? Hmm. I'm just gonna like systematically go through and kill all the dinos. Get back here, you little buddy. Man. That guy's not gonna come anywhere near here, is he? Okay, well that's fine. We'll just go here and uh take this. And uh go back this way. The way we came from, I guess. And I keep going. How does that sound? I'm gonna have to be mindful about the fact that I don't have an infinite supply of Terror Blast arrows, though. Hey, at least I'm calling them Terror Blast and not Tear Blast like I was for the longest time, now that I understand that they tear things off. Yes, I know your music is very ominous. That's the way I wanna go. Okay, we're gonna go around here. Boop, 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 boop. Hmm. Robots don't cry, that's true, they don't. Well, or do they? Or do they? Maybe they do. Maybe that's maybe that's the story that we're going to we're going to explore in this game. Is maybe robots do cry. And maybe robots don't like being enslaved any more than people do. Oh, what what is there? Does it see me? What is it? Where are we? What are we doing? What are we dealing with? Oh, horses! Okay. Don't want to mess with you guys. Sorry, buddies! Don't want to mess with you. Sorry. We're good. We're good. Uh, how close am I? Oh, I'm really close. So if I just, like, turn to, like, the side, it's, like, right there. So can I just like not, oh, I'm like right all up in their business. Okay, I'm gonna just not. I don't wanna fight the horses. Thanks. Not high on my list of things I wanna do. So we're just gonna go this way. We're just gonna go around. Oh my God, Sleeping Bee, I appreciate that. Terror Blast is when things get blown up. Tear Blast is the experience of playing Final Fantasy X and crying your little eyes out. All right. How are we going to get over there? This is a good question that I do not have the answer to. But I'm going to go explore it anyway. Maybe this maybe this will do? Either that or maybe there's going to be like a sawtooth 
I'll be like, Welp. I love that the name Sawtooth is actually, actually really close to the real world creature, just Sabertooth. Whereas most of them are not. Okay, how do I get down? I could find an actual path like you're supposed to. But where's the fun in that? Much better to just slide down like that. Yeah, good job. Well done, Eloy. Thank you. I guess I take the Skyrim Skyrim horse jumping approach to traveling. Apparently. I've never played Skyrim. I don't think I would enjoy it. Um but okay, we must be getting close. There's a there's a there's a fire. Oh wait, so it's behind me? Oh. Wait. Wait, is it this machine thing that I was just in? Is it this? Sorry, Aloy, I will stop staring at your butt now. I'm sure it is very toned, but uh, I will give you some dignity. Um, Getting soaked from melted snow. Hold on, Aloy, I need to figure out how to get where we're going. Hopefully not die. Uh, um, oh. Oh, okay. I ha- I- I- I guess I just assumed I would be able to see this. But, uh... Uh... Do I have to fall down there? I guess that's what I did last time. Uh... Uh, I'm not gonna like fall fall. That would be a bad idea. I'm gonna have to go to a cave, aren't I? I don't want to go into a cave. I am going to a cave. Why is everything caves? Oh my god. I wonder what's down here. Yep. Yep. I am so actually not nearly as much lower level as I was before. I was level 5 when I first encountered this quest. So level 18, almost. Almost. I can round up. Uh. Uh. Um. I don't know that I can handle it, Chrono. I don't know how to get... How am I going to get down there? A Aloy? Aloy, friend, have you got any suggestions, honey? How How are we going to... How are we going to do that? I don't see any, like, interact points. Oh, shoot! Oh, shoot! Oh, I do see an interact point. Oh my god, Aloy, honey. I'm sorry. Hoo, boy. I'm glad that you're able to do this, Aloy, without my uh, observational skills being necessary, because I'm apparently not good at it. I kind of hope this water isn't, like, acidic. Awfully suck to just, like, die the moment you step into it. But instead, I'm going to swim in it, which is a bad idea. What is this? Oh, there's a metal flower here. That's cool. Okay. Such strange artifacts. They are really strange. Unknown design, possibly used to promote seed germination. Includes an embedded fragment. When this pine sapling grows to flower, who will be here? Okay, so I told you, so I told you, so I told you. So, like, the world gets potentially destroyed. Maybe it's by nanobots. Maybe it's by nuclear bombs. We don't know. We know nano nano machines are a thing. Like, that's, that's definitely a thing that's, like, actually, like, been confirmed in the story. And so, I feel like Mother's Cradle is kind of, like, where, like, where what remained of life was kept there, or at least what remained of humanity. But I think it might be more what remained of life than what remained of humanity because these flowers, these metal flowers are things that are designed to go up and go out and redistribute seeds to repopulate the earth. And it's possible that it's nothing more than, okay, well, if humans are going to be gone, let's go ahead and, and contribute to the breakdown of society. Um, like, 
like 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 let's let's go ahead and get this process of nature reclaiming. Um, let's get it started. Let's help it out by putting more seeds down. Um, or it could be like the plants all died or are going to die, so we'll have this go out there and put more plants out there. Um, you know, it, it could be it could be it could be either of those. Like I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, but this indicates like an uncertainty of whether like for example to me this and i'm reading into this and i know i am but i'm reading into this because i have the context of the rest of the story and some familiarity with science fiction and fantasy in general like this seems like the person who wrote this poetry and i'm, I'm really interested in the person who wrote the poetry that is attached to these is not sure if humanity will survive when this plant grows because this isn't asking like what's gonna like like who will be under this tree in a hundred years or two hundred years. This is like when the tree grows, who will be here? Because there's I think maybe a delay, and then things will go out and be rebuilt. I don't know, but I'm curious. Now it's also possible that there's an AI who is responsible for writing that poetry, um, which would uh, we have absolutely no reason whatsoever to think that might be the case. like none um but i'm just really curious about like that's one of the big things in determining this is in a cave it's a room. thank you aloy i still think it's a cave aloy aloy ah uh, ah uh. From the age of the old ones. But how do I get to it? That. Oh, I thought there was a data point. Maybe not. I have a data point I'm not supposed to have yet. Do you have any idea how happy I am about this? Do you want to watch me sequence break my story experience? Are we ready for this? Are we ready for this, folks? You ready to do it? You ready to do it? Oh, it's the very last. I sh okay, tell me true. I'm going to put this chat hat on. <clears throat> This is, I told you, you'll know when the chat hat comes on, because it is impossible to mistake. If I read this data point, since it is the very, very end of this list here, is it bad for me to read this and get this information right now? Like, will I regret because it provides a late hint that will destroy everything Because if I get it too early? Because I don't play open world games, so I don't know. Let me know, folks, because I really want to see what this has to say. But I also don't want to, like, ruin... You're supposed to be able to find it this early? Okay, Sleeping Bee. Okay. The area did have a level... It's a level 25 requirement, I think. Okay. Alright. Alright, thank you, folks. Alright, let's do this. Ultra Weave Trials. So before we do that, actually, sorry. Before we do that, if you take a look, the level of technology here is interesting, and the coloring is different than we've seen before. Hollow locks, which we may not be able to open. Bunker doors. And some sort of armor. Ultra Weave, which seems like this is more advanced than anything we, as players, will have a familiarity with. It looks... Oh shoot. Oh shoot. Oh no. Oh no. Please don't. That's not what I meant to do. Okay. Well. We seem alright. Uh. 
something pulsing or such as the water. I don't know, but it looks kind of like Mewtwo. It looks like that might be humanoid, like armor to put on a person, though. So is this something that people came... Oh, I guess. Let's find out. Is this something that people came up with? And how, how deep in our timeline is this, I wonder? Because, like, the nanomachines become a problem. The, the nanomachines become a problem at some point, and I'm not really sure how that factors in, and if that's what the people in the previous bunker were trying to, like, what they were like, okay, we're, we're gonna die horribly, perhaps, because the nanomachines are gonna kill us horribly, so we'll, we'll have, like, a, a, a gentle, like, lead death, um, instead. I, I, I don't, I don't know. This is gonna maybe give me something. We'll see. No, or not! Ultra Weave M Mark 7.1 Trials, October 2065. October 3rd, 2065, past threshold, 85 over 100, results, ballistic test, okay, so it passes, it passes if it gets over an 85, ballistic test, yes, shrapnel test, yes, laser test, yes, shield integrity, yes, impact to torso, impact to arms, and impact to legs, do not pass the test. Weave is not tightening properly on local impact tests, we need to optimize existing sensors or add more. Oh, that is, that is a trial. Okay, so we're doing doing trials really intensely, because it's just two days later, there's two more trials. Past threshold. Ah, they're building it, they're making it better. Sensor optimization successful, but torso protection still lagging. Recommend increasing weave density. Okay, yeah, so you can see the arms and legs are getting better, but the torso is not quite better enough. Okay, so then we give us another, another day, one more day. They've done two more tests. Past threshold. Impact legs. Notes, getting there on the weave density and detection components, but an integration error on the left knee tanked the impact test. Ouch. Subject isn't going to be able to walk that one off. Surgery required. Yeah, look at that impact legs. 13. Wow. So trying to get the balance. That is interesting. That it's, like... So... Like... Scientific. Like, I don't know. It's just... It's really interesting. Supply crate. There's that. Supply crates. Are those guns? Is that another data point? I thought there was a... I guess not. I think the old ones use numbers like this to indicate time. See, she's so smart. She's so clever. She manages to put a lot of these things together. Like, she's just a very clever, very good at solving problems person. Secure encryption port with holographic display. All right, well, it's not a cave. It's not a cave. It is objectively not, not a cave, not a cave, not a cave. And there's containers and armor and stuff. It's not a cave, it's not a cave. That, that's what I want. It looks like it's a data point and I want it. Interesting, after all this time, the armor is still 21. There's the door, I'm trying to get there, okay. After all this time, the armor is still in one piece. Aha, here we go. That's what I want. That's the real purpose here. Okay. From a text mail from Major Garrow. That's a new name. I don't know if that name will be a recurring one or not. Data corruption min minimal. From Major Garrow to General Aaron Harris. Subject Ultra Weave Progress. Okay, so here we still have an army, a military of some sort. Um, so it's not what I'm thinking of with like the civilian. Civilian. Sorry, the, the civilians. The civilian battalion is very interesting. That's a thing. It's, it's, it's interesting. Okay, General, you want it fast, cheap, and good, and that's what we're going to deliver. By using a flexible nanofiber weave instead of plating, and enhancing protection with a 400 EV... What is that? Electroviolet hard light microprojector. Is that like the, like the, like the hermit crabs, or is that like... 
like cloaking mechanism, hard life micro projector. We've reduced our testing cycle from weeks to days, and I'm confident we can get the suit out by next month with enough production to cover dozens of elite units at least. Better yet, it will be half the weight, half the cost, and offer twice the mobility. All we need is the balance of our funding, a few more techs, and another experienced test subject. I know resources are stretched to the breaking point, but any more delays will jeopardize the schedule, so please advise ASAP. May God be with you and Jane in these dark times. So we're clearly like, things are bad. This is probably pr like immediately pre-apocalypse. But we still have a functional military, which, okay, Semper Fi, I think is how you say that. Yeah, because it's Semper Fi, do or die. I think something like that, right? Isn't that how the rhyme goes? Which branch of the, mili of the US military is that? Is that the Marines? Somebody will know this. I do not. That is Marines. Oh, I've picked something up from pop culture and it's in my brain properly. I'm so proud of my brain. Aren't you proud of my brain? You should be proud of my brain. It struggles. So this is the US military, the Marines specifically. Major Garrow is doing scientific research, has some familiarity with Aaron Jerez. I'm sorry, I think it's probably Jerez. And I know it's probably supposed to be a rolled R. I am physically incapable of rolling my R's, so you're just going to have to deal with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm proud. I'm very, I appreciate that you guys are proud of my brain. It's doing its best. Um, may, be, may God be with you and Jane in these dark times. Yeah. DARPA? Oh, I've heard DARPA before. Aren't they in um, XCOM? <laughs> Things like that. I guess if it's the R&D branch and we're like exploring alien technology and stuff like that, that would make sense. They're in Metal Gear. Oh, okay, I have played Metal Gear. That's that's true. I know these things from video games and movies, okay? <laughs> okay, well, Erha here, definitely. Or Wanderer Reha? Have I been saying your name wrong this whole time? Is it Wanderer Reha instead of Wanderer Reha? I'm sorry about that. Chief Nerd Wrangler. That's a great name. It's like wrangling cats, huh? Um, okay, well, I, I, I do not come from a military family, and I have a very bad, uh, memory for these things specifically, and a really bad understanding of how things put together. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Oh, it even tells you right there it's research. That's nice of them. I'm surprised they didn't do a backronym, though. I feel like sometimes military people like to do backronyms. Backronyms are great. I'm really good at backronyms, by the way. Like I can come up with good acronyms and backronyms. It's a, it's a gift. Because if you have, if you are obnoxious at naming things in the specific way that's, that I am obnoxious at naming things, you can be good at that. Huh. Okay. So they're doing this presumably not just for the sake of the American military, but potentially for the survival of all of humanity would be my guess, potentially. I think that that's what we're trying to do here. Last door, heavily shielded, seal integrity maintained. Hollow lock. Interface unavailable. Okay, so I can't do anything with that. Oh, come on! It's glowing! Surely that's something. Is that an M and an X? Looks like an M and an X. So it could be an H and an X. Either way, that looks like that's probably significant. Oh, this is not... This is probably not gonna mean anything bad. I haven't seen one of these since I was a little kid. Yeah. Sorry, Aloy. She sounds a little bit uncomfortable. Hollow lock. Interface unavailable. That looks like that is a down arrow. But okay, so this is decidedly human made. Faro. We've seen that before. That's not a thing outside of the game world, is it? Data shows required settings for nearby hollow locks. All right, what what does sphere stand for? Okay, thank you, Reha. Okay, so 1200, 1500, 800, 2100, and then zero, zero. Okay. 
Oh, no, is that, is that 1800? Yeah. No? Hold on. Yes. All right. Could somebody write this down for me? 1200, 1500, 1800, 2100, and then 0000. zero, zero, zero. Oh, oh, it's visible here. Never mind. Okay. Can I interact with you? Can I interact with you? Uh, I guess I can't. This one's not... Oh, here we go. Alright. So hold on, we're gonna, we're gonna solve a puzzle here. So that's the door. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Five of these. Three of them are unavailable. Two of them are. So that's gonna be 1500 and 1800. Okay, so you... You are gonna be 1500. These devices are missing power cells. Oh. I'll have to find power cells to get these to work. Oh, I have a power cell. I have one. There, fits. I just need to slot in one more. Okay. Wait, how many power cells do I have? It's some kind of code. Maybe there's a clue nearby. There is a clue nearby. Okay, okay, hold on. Hold on. Um, hmm. I guess I can figure this out and hopefully not die. Okay. So this one should be zero, 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 zero. Which looks correct. Okay, so 1200. Wait, no, no, no. 1200 is the first one. And that's 12 o'clock. 1500. 1500 is 3 o'clock. Which is clockwise. Maybe there's some more information nearby. Something that will tell me how this works. This one is going to be six o'clock, so that's going to be down. Looks like each dial has four positions. The music's making me scared. Get each dial in the right position. And this is nine o'clock. Sorry, we're just turning everything. That should be it. Do it. Yep. I gotta check the door. Yep. Yep. Okay, I got it. Whew. Side quest. An ancient suit of armor lies in a ruin of old ones. Okay. So I wonder if that means I actually could have explored those other ruins. That I got the stuff, but I couldn't access it. Because I noped out of there. But I wonder. Because... Because I thought that that was where the high level was. But this is... Oh, I'm going to have to fight something when I go in there. I'm going to die horribly, I bet. Well, it's been nice knowing you. Aloy, I'm sorry, but I feel that this is a very in-character way for me to get you killed. Those clamps have the armor locked in place. Maybe there's a way to power up the mechanism, release the clamps. supply crate. Oh, look at that. Echo shells. Those, that's the thing that I need to make my tear blast arrows. This will help. Yeah, that's good stuff. Okay. Hold on. More stuff. Cool. So I'm just, I'm looking around. I'm trying to make some sense of this. Power cable. Reinforced platinum conductor. I solved that puzzle pretty well though, didn't I? Just need to install these power cells. That should do it. Okay, so I'll need more power cells for this side. 
Okay. Oh, hello. What are you? These numbers. They must be related to segments of a circle. Oh, okay. All right. So I guess I'll be getting power cells because I don't have the power cells for this half, but I had the power cells for the other side. Okay, well that's good to know. So I won't be able to do this yet. So I won't, I won't, sorry Ayla, I won't be getting you killed just yet. Hate to disappoint. I, I guess it, I mean, you can, you, you can, you can see why from a distance I might have thought Mewtwo. Because it kind of like has like, he has like that, 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 that pose, you know? Um, and it kind of looks like that. And it just like the context of like military science experiment stuff is very, I'm not even like a person who's super up on, on, uh, on, on Pokemon stuff, but even I know that. Okay. Experimental personal armor, nanofiber construction with inlaying micro projector network, which I wonder if that means that it can do stealth stuff. So I'm clearly not going to be getting this armor just yet, you know? This seems like it's high level. So it's interesting. Okay, so it, it I guess it'll project stuff to protect your inner guts. Okay, that's so interesting. All right. Like, I don't know what the, this usually means you can, you can, but I think that this is just their way of being like, this one is super important. You need to pay attention to it. So it puts out purple triangles because it's not the path finding triangles, but it looked like it might be. Okay. Well, uh, I, it, that appears to be all we can do here. I don't have... I don't have the power cells for this yet. I didn't realize, I thought I'd only gotten one power cell before. But, uh, but yeah, okay. Congratulations, folks. We, uh, we did it. I guess this is a super armor. The super armor... I mean, and like, I don't know that I trust their future science, but like, also I kind of get it. And maybe that's actually secretly the best armor in the game. And they let me do half of it right now so that I know what it'll take to do the rest. So I can teleport out. Yeah, I wanted more data points too, but I'm not seeing any. I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I am looking, I'm trying. Power cables. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to get through that other door, put that power supply in there, and then probably have to fight something. It's my guess. It's gonna be awful. I'm gonna be sad. Okay, so, well. Oh, I can't travel out of here. Oh, wait. Wait, hold on. Is there more floor? To, huh. No. Oh, inventory. What did I get? What did I get? Did I get something new? Like new new? No? Treasure boxes. Ooh! Metal shards. Yeah. Yeah, metal shards. I sure do love metal shards. I love that I have a box full of rocks. Oh. Oh my god, all these rocks. Huh. Cause like, I want these, but I'm worried that they might be really, really good. Like a mighty bow sounds really good. And I think that that's a special thing, like a special secret thing, like a pre-order thing or something like that, rather than, I don't know. Okay, well, I think that we've done all we can do here and I guess I can't teleport out. Wait, no, I can't, I can't, we concluded I could. I could, I just have to go up here and then I can teleport out. Where do I, where do I want to go? What, what are you? Oh, psh, I don't care about the lodge. Don't care about the lodge. Do not care about the lodge. I don't care about the cups, but I'm, I'm, I'm wanting the metal flowers. 
So we could actually progress forward. Do you folks want to... Do you, do you want to progress forward? Shall we actually, like, continue through that way? Shall we do it? Shall we teleport here? Or here? And go forward some more? Hmm... Maybe we should do it. Hold on. How do I teleport? Travel is L... R2. Yeah. We're gonna do it. We'll go back there eventually. But now I know what I'm doing with that. I'm getting my Mewtwo armor. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's what it that's what it's called now. Okay, so that one is just plain damage. You know, I'll have you know, I actually like to read the instruction manual with games that come with instruction manuals, but I can't keep track of all of that stuff. I forget it, it's too much. So. All right, here we are. What other side quests have we got? Oh, okay, I have to go to Day Tower. What other quests have we got? Go to the border fort at the western end of the valley. I don't care about that one. This bandit camp I could go explore. Oh man, I should probably finish. I should probably finish these. I should probably finish these. Oh my god. I should probably have equipped that at any point when I was using Terror Blast a lot. Oh, speaking of. Okay. So we have been out this way a little bit. Okay, so there's gonna be a hermit crab. There's that, and that. Um, what am I gonna, oh, look at that. Look at that, it goes way up. Oh my God, there's just so much. Just imagine me jumping up those mountains. I think I want the Banuk figure. Oh, and this is a town. I wanna go to this town, okay, hold on. We're gonna just go this way and see what happens, shall we? Hopefully I'm not just like aggravating every creature ever. Hold on, I'm going the right way. Uh, Aloy's favorite action movie is Cliff Jumper. Does Aloy jump up cliffs? Oh, have I done this one? I done whatever this is. Is there a thing to do up here? Okay, day tower, hunter's gathering. Uh, what do we got? We got some robots. Hunter's gathering. Oh, I see. Yeah. Take us up there, which is a whole thing. But I think I would rather, I don't know what that is. I want to go to the Bannock figure. So we'll do that. So we'll go to this town and see what's up. How does that sound? We'll go this way. We'll fight some dinosaurs. Oh, this is new music. Where are things that I can hide behind? I'm not seeing a lot of grass here. Oh, there's some grass there. Nothing to see here, buddy. Physically outside of the line of sight. Where are you going, buddy? Okay. Okay, so there's the, those, there's the three of you. Is there anything else? Because I can take you out. I can take you out. I can drop you one at a time. Hold on. In fact, I don't need to use my good arrows on you. I didn't really 
Liz, you were over there, buddy. Okay. Well, that was good. Okay. Thank you. Phew. All right. Now, what are we doing from here? Where are we going? What are you? A grazer? Anything else? Do I have to take out a grazer? I think I can take out a grazer. It's another grazer. I think I can maybe take out a grazer. In fact, I can maybe like shoot some parts off of a grazer and maybe get that. Get that. The tear blast thing. What is that? Is that a signpost? This is an entirely new area that I haven't been to before, so I'm very like curious about everything that I'm seeing. Like everywhere else is like sort of in the vicinity of places that I've been before. Oh, the music's ominous. Hello. Hello, ominous music. What else have we got? We got Oh, there's a bunch of them. Of course they come in groups. Of course they come in groups. Maybe we won't mess with them. Oh! Hello! Glad I didn't mess with them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the best way to not run into a fire bellow back? Well, I want to go that way. So, okay. We'll go back this way. Just tromping around. Fortunately, those guys aren't the most observant things in the world. Yeah, you 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 do your things. I'm gonna I'm gonna go around you now. Wee Oh, there's more. Oh, it's nighttime. Of course, there's more of you. It's nighttime. How am I gonna do this? How? How am I gonna do this? Oh, I might have to actually fight these guys. Hmm. Hmm. Because I want to go up there. How am I gonna get around there? Please don't see me. Wow, there's a lot of you guys. Oh, good. There's also some longhorns. Great, that's what I want. I definitely want- Holy crap! They're everywhere! There are so many of them! Oh my god! What on earth do you do? When there are so many of them! <sighs> Can you come over here, one of you guys, and I'll, like, override you? I want to go that way. And it's not that far, but there's so many of these guys. So many of them. They're not friends. I mean, I could try to make them friends, but they're just, like, doing their thing. What are you? You don't look like one of these guys. What are you? What are you? Okay, so we got a longhorn, a couple of watchers. Oh my god, there's so many more. Another longhorn. I think those are longhorns anywhere. Yeah, those are longhorns. Okay, wait. And then you are a sign that tells me that that's the way to get up to. How? Oh, hello. Yes. Please come here. Uh, actually, no, I can't. Just you're facing the wrong way. I'll startle you. I just want to cross the road. Oh, there's so many of them. I am literally surrounded. Did I make a bad decision coming here, or am I just being a coward? I just want to cross the road, that's all. But I'm too chicken. <laughs> I want to go up there. Hi, buddy. Can you turn around? 
Can you walk the other way? Can you, can you turn around, buddy? Let me let me go this way. Oh my god. Can I throw a rock that way? Can I, can I throw a rock that way? That way? Hold on. I've never thrown rocks. This is a very scary area to be throwing rocks. Oh, I could try this. Or I could just walk past you. This seems like a very dangerous place to try things that are new, you know? Like, there's so many of them. So yeah, let's get to the fire- get away from the fire-breathing chicken, yeah. Well, what's the worst that can happen, right? Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Oh, shoot. How did that happen? Are they running away? Please run away. What happened? Wait, what's fighting them? What are they- what are they doing? Okay. Oh jeez, here we go! Here we go! Oops, hello! Did they start attacking each other in their confusion? I think they might have. I think they might have. Are those people? Who are those? Ba oh, they're bandits. Oh. mine. Okay. It's gonna go cause some trouble over there. Alright, well, we might as well uh, search the grazers. Get some stuff. I was thinking I was saving some humans, but they were in fact bad news. They were bad news humans. Oops. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Alright. Can I, like, send them after the, the other humans? Hold on. Or did the humans- because the humans are all going away, I think. No, they're not. What are they doing? Hold on, we're gonna go through my inventory and we're gonna get rid of some of these modifications. I should probably actually use some of these because I clearly get some of them again. Okay, hold on. I should put some on. I really should use some. Because I'm getting plenty of them, you know? I just... I don't want to use a thing that's like, you know? Okay, what are you doing? What are you- what are you humans doing? Where are you going? Where are you going? What are they doing? Where are they going? Are they gonna attack the town? Oh, 
because I don't want to let that happen. Oh no, they're gonna fight the they're gonna fight the dinosaurs for me. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, so if you're wondering why that just happened, why this is happening at all, what they are introducing us to I suspected something new and interesting was going to happen once we crossed that bridge, but I wasn't sure what it was going to be. And the, uh, the answer is... Ooh, Grazer Heart, nice. The answer is, they are introducing to us the fact that enemies can fight each other, and that this may be a thing that we randomly encounter, or that is, or that is scripted and structured. That's why there were so many things that I wasn't sure what to do here. It was because they, they wanted to set that up. They wanted us to know that that was going to happen from now on. Who though? That was really exciting and interesting, wasn't it? And you could hear a human voice, which you're not used to hearing in the wild. And so there's something kind of jarring about hearing somebody say, like, you won't survive this. Um, and you're so used to being against the robots that when you see a human, you have this immediate reaction of like, oh, is that an ally? And of course it's not. And the bandits are a problem. But, uh, oh, campfire discovered. Hello, bird. Yes, you're a bird. Yes, you're a bird. That's right, birdie. Yep, goodbye, birdie. I'm Naruto running after you, birdie. Hunter's Gathering. It's a new settlement. Okay. I wonder, is it Nora Hunters or is it Hunters from all over? I guess I should save. Huh. Okay, so these are Karjas. That one just swore by the sun. Hello. Hello. At this grove, anyone We've can lived under the same the sun all this time. Imagine do. that. Why, uh, hello there. Yes, yes, you're very friendly. I pray to our mother every day. Okay, so there are Nora here you? too. Interesting. Okay, so it does seem like everybody is here. Bound it? The last hunt was a good one. Struck swift as snow, and none will be going hungry. You're n that's new. I haven't met one of you before. Don't assume the hunt will be easier just because the land is warmer. The hunt demands full preparation. Oh, look, they, I have their armor, and it looks like that one right there. How interesting is that? Oh, man. So the world, they're giving you a little bit at a time because it would be overwhelming. So you, you, you feel like you understand the Nora, and you start understanding the Nora, and then they give you the Karja. And now there's, like, a little bit more. Oops, that's the wrong button. I want to talk. I want to talk. Hello, can I talk to you? We should head north. North. Where the ice and snow falls. Oh, no, I want to talk to... Oops. I want to talk to them, okay. Hello. Osirim? A little more dirt on you and even you'd pass for an Osirim. They're really cool looking, oh my god. I've hunted machines for so long, I don't know what to think of a place where they're peaceful. A place where they're peaceful? What? Funny how Karja act all high and mighty, then talk to the damn sun like you can hear them. Been doing this since I was small. Oh, I love seeing people from around the world coming together here. This is what I was hoping this would be. Also, this I time last year I was pounding on an anvil back home. I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss it. 
Okay, do I know the officer? Nora looked tough enough, but would it kill him to fill out a decent set of armor? <laughs> I don't know if I know the Osserum. Do I know the Osserum? Do I know the Osserum? Do I know the Osserum? Can you dress like them? That's a good question, because yes, they are the coolest. That one guy was an Osserum? That one guy. I met one. Oh! No, he's when not. When machine spirits resist, it forces the Banuke to prove our worth. But in the grove, they're docile. It feels unnatural. To our fire, sister. The grove? Do they all have an equivalent of the cradle that they came from, then? The grove, where the machines so are docile. It's a bonic... Okay, oh, the guy who was hitting on Aloy, the guy who said you should come to the city and, like, basically quoted its, like, marketing materials at her. I like, I think I liked him. This, he's the one with the sister, isn't he? He's the one with the sister. Is this just me, or do people walk slower here? Don't they have places to be? <laughs> oh my god, I love the Osirum. Okay, okay, the Osirum so far are my favorite. Oh my god, okay. Hello. Oh! What do you want from me? Okay, that's fine. Whatever. The ladies are way cooler than you. They look cooler too. Hello. Hold like this. Rusts a body's joints. Yeah, rusts. See, because they're the they're the dwarves. They're the ones who do dwarving. They they do metal work. Cold like this. Rusts a body's joints. Yes, I know. We can only write so many. You don't count on me talking to everybody. Yes. Yeah, so they've got their armor reinforced with these little little metal circles. Oh, hello. Gara. Little Spark. What blew you across the mountains? I was headed for Meridian. And you're stuck here with the rest of us until the Karja opened the fort gates. I'm Jira. Are you drinking? <laughs> I'm not. Oh. Look, with the news I've been hearing about the Nora, first one's on me. Every day I try to share one with someone who I like. Uh, most days I have to settle for someone I can beat in a fight. <laughs> it's a little gulp. Here's to you. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> what is this? Oh my god. Scrapper sap, the good stuff. Keeps you warm in a snowstorm, strips the grit out of a gear wheel. Amazing. Amazing. I love her already. I knew you, the moment I saw her, Chrono, I knew you were going to like her. <laughs> but she's really, I like her. I like that she. I can tell, like, I'm like, oh, I can tell I like her, but she doesn't feel just tropish, you know? There's something about the way the characters... Okay, look, Krona, some some of us are predictable in some ways, all right? That's, that's, that's all there is to it. <laughs> and and, and, and so, some of us have character types that our friends can guess we will like. <laughs> so she, so there's something almost, almost superficial feeling about the characterization because the way the people talk is so stilted and weird but it's stilted and weird not because the writers can't write because they very clearly can't and given how incredibly natural the like more contemporary dialogue that we find in the data points is um the the decision to make the people in Aloy's time sound unfamiliar is clearly an intentional one and it's really really interesting frankly you know, because I've heard people complain. I haven't played it. Maybe, maybe someday I will, but I've heard this content I want to avoid. But I've heard people complain that Life is Strange has really badly written dialogue that is trying to sound natural and young, but doesn't sound natural and young, you know, if that makes sense. Um, and, uh, and so like, like it just, it sounds weird. Like it sounds like, hello, fellow kids. Um, and you can, so you can try to stylize your dialogue and have it not work. You can stylize your dialogue and have it work extremely well. Um, for example, Night in the Woods has extraordinarily stylized dialogue, but it all works very well. It feels very intentional and it feels real, even if it is extremely unnatural in the way that it's written. Um, of course, now people have started patterning the way they talk based on Scott Benson's writing style. Um, and so that's kind of changing a little bit, at least as far as how things are written online, which is really interesting to see how... Um, how 
like for example the way undertale is written and the way night in the woods are written is written um those two games uh have influenced the way people on the internet talk and make jokes which is really interesting um because if you look at the two people who wrote those games they have very distinctive ways of communicating even outside of the games they make um and you can hear their voices in the way they write dialogue in the way that they write jokes and it's neat to see that that is filtering through um, and literally affecting the communication style and sentence structure of people who enjoy those games. But, but yeah, Night in the Woods is, it's very stylized. It's super stylized. You can write something in the style of Night in the Woods dialogue and you will feel that it is in the style of Night in the Woods dialogue. Um, on the opposite side of things is, um, Oxenfree, which tries very hard to have, because anytime you write, you're choosing what you put on the paper and what you have somebody say and what you don't have somebody say and the way you say, they say it. Um, you'll never write a conversation word for word exactly like it happens, but you can give the impression of it sounding real and natural, but you're going to have to make some changes because natural conversations would be un unreadable. Um, so many ums, so many like, like, like fragments and, and, and tangents and things like that. Sorry, narrator way, but clearly you and I are like on a similar wavelength here with writing. Um, uh, when I because I streamed both Night in the Woods and Oxen Free, um, and and I believe I made that that comparison um, back when I was playing them too because it's so striking, because Night in the Woods is so stylized and Oxen Free is so unstylized to an uncomfortable degree. So Oxen Free has decided to maintain a lot of the, uh, natural, uh, like, they're, they've tried to just take the way people really talk and put that in that experience because they want to capture a certain feeling of being a teenager who's awkward, conversation is, is awkward, you can miss your opportunity to speak, you can say the wrong thing, you can get the timing wrong. It's really interesting, um, and, like, I don't know. I, I, for me, I found oxen free uncomfortable, um, and it also it's it's portrayal at two real relationships did not in any way mirror any relationships that I had had because apparently I must have been weird in high school because neither one of those high school like high school friends um, experiences really mirrored my group of friends or how we interacted. But oxen free was very very far from my friends. We did not backstab. We weren't just mean to each other randomly all the time. Like, I I had to take it. Other people said that that was part of the growing pains of being a teenager for them. Um, anyway, so all of this to say, I kind of got off on a tangent there. Um, but yeah, so when you write dialogue, you choose how stylized do you want it to be and what kind of stylized do you want? Do you want to have people speaking as though they are in a play? Like a, like a play, because like, I mean, because plays can be very conversational, but you know what I mean? Like a play, not quite Shakespearean, because that's like literally from another era, but things that kind of harken back to that. Um, or you can try to have something that's more like natural, um, even to the point of it being uncomfortable. Um, or you can try to write a style that doesn't fit you as Life is Strange apparently did. Um, so Horizon Zero Dawn has brilliantly, brilliantly mastered different styles of speaking. When you go back and read the data points that are news features that show different people speaking within one news feature, each one of those voices will sound distinctive. And you can tell something about that person based on their word choice, or their sentence choice, because it sounds or feels at least it, 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 the verisimilitude, like it feels real, feels truthful to how somebody we can make certain assumptions about would talk. Um, and and like part of how when I read some of those data points out loud and I'm like putting on a voice, part of how I can put on that voice is because they're able to capture a distinctive feel and such a strong impression. And that's in, in the way that they write it. So they have an extraordinary, like an extraordinary skill at capturing voice. I would say that this is a strength of the writers of Horizon Zero Dawn. But the way that the people we encounter in the real world the current time in Aloy's time, Aloy's contemporaries, the way they talk is so weird, so stilted, so awkward and oddly constructed and, and, and strangely emoted that it means that I haven't fully been able to emotionally connect with anyone except Aloy 
um, in the way that I would normally have expected to connect. And it's not that I'm not emotionally invested in the story, and it's not that I'm not interested, and it's not that I don't like them. I love Sona and, um, oh, what's his name? Sona's son. Oh, what's his name? <sighs> He's really cool. Why have I forgotten his name? You know who I'm talking about, though. Sona's son, who's awesome. Varl, yes. And there's a bunch of other characters. They're cool, and I get excited, and I'm like, oh man, if you kill this character, I'm gonna be really mad at you. And that's true. Um, but there's this sense of distance between me and them. And it's largely to do with the way they talk. And it's so stilted. But it's intentionally stilted. They intentionally decided because they are they have, they have exhibited in the data points that they are capable of writing non-stilted dialogue in so many different nuanced ways of speaking that they chose to make everyone in this era talk in a stilted way. It's weird. Like maybe some of it has to do with a dialogue system, but I don't think so. Because it's 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 the it's the conversations that do it. And people have found ways by now to write skill trees to oh, skill trees. Conversation trees um, in a way that's efficient enough that they can actually like work around the limitations of what's repeating and what's not repeating, um, and what's a true choice and what just seems like a choice. Um, so I, I think, I think that it's not a question of fitting into the dialogue system. There is maybe a little bit of stiffness that comes with that because it doesn't something make me think of, for example, I'm sorry, Bioware, <laughs> but, uh, but it's, it's the way that they talk, the way that they put sentences together, how much of what they say is stuffed to the gills with world building otherness and they're always using like idioms and expressions and things that don't don't map onto anything in our real world and i feel like part of it is maybe especially when it comes to talking to the random npcs like that by the way i'm sorry i missed somebody somebody came in and talked about chrono cross i don't know if i'm going to play chrono cross because i tried playing it back in the day and i didn't like it um, but it has one of the best soundtracks ever. So I don't know. We'll see. But in the meantime, I'm taking forever with Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, I'll just listen to the soundtrack. Um, no, but... Uh, but So so they, 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 they can't count on you obsessively talking to every NPC every time. Um, so they want to make sure that when you talk... When you overhear or speak with random NPCs, that you get bits of world flavor. So that even if you barely engage with the story, you still get a sense for these things. So it does wind up being a little bit heavy handed to some degree as far as like, these are the people who are like this. These are the people who are like this. These people are going to talk about rust and metal because they're the metal workers. These people are going to talk about this. Like, like they want you to, upon interacting with one or two people from each culture to be able to give like a three or four world word summary of what that culture is. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that works, uh, to some degree. If you talk to everyone or listen to everyone like I do, it can get me a little bit frustrating. Um, but I think that, I think that the stilting, the stilted writing is supposed to be stilted. I think that's intentional. I think that's how it was written and how it was directed. And I think that it's intended to feel weird because they're so good at doing things that are not that. That the fact that they chose to do that, I don't think that they would make that by accident. You know, they are too skilled. They are too good at everything else that they do for that to be an accident. So one could say, like, does it does it work for me? Does it not work for me? And that's that's a good question. That's an interesting question. Um, and I'm curious to see as I get deeper into this game um, and get to know more of the characters because also I'm not used to playing open world games. So it's possible that the way you get emotionally attached to things and people and stories and events in open world games is different. And I'm not calibrated to that yet. Um, because I feel like I'm so early that I don't, I don't know anyone. I barely know anyone, but I'm also wondering, am I going to actually get to know anyone, but Aloy, you know, or is it going to be these very superficial, we do some quests, we do some quests, but we're so early in the story. It's hard to say, but but the the writing style definitely does keep me at a bit of a distance. And I, I think that they want it to feel strange and alien. I think they want you to feel like you're not in our time and place. Um, does it work for you? That's a question. 
I mean, feel free to answer that question, folks. As long as you can do so in a way that avoids spoiling anything. Um, yeah, yeah, like, like the, the, any voice acting we've gotten from the past doesn't sound stilted. Um, that's what I'm saying, like, the direction seems to be, like, they can get what they want out of it. So whether we're, whether we're listening to the vantage points or the recorded data points, I don't remember what they're called, the audio logs and things like that, none of that feels stilted at all. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Because even the one that's, like, 40 years from now, like sounds and feels natural and familiar. So I think there's supposed to be a disconnect there. Let's 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 talk about let's talk about these different people in case you didn't understand that the point of this is to show you the different cultures intermingling. To contrast them to understand what they are and be like, oh it's those ones. So let's talk about the Ostrums. I think I like them. Because I liked the guy who hit on Aloy. I liked him. I really want to meet his sister. <laughs> and I immediately liked those ladies who were out there. Um, you're Osirim, aren't you, Jira? Jira. Here, I'm just an outlander, and that fits my wheel just fine. You don't know about Osiram women? No. Well then, in the claim where we're from, we don't own property. We become it. Alewife, forge wife, and so on. Blade wife, if we're inclined to shear our heads and kiss the steel. That is what it is. Make strong marriages, or infamous criminals. Me, I'd sooner sleep under the stars in a roof I don't own. Huh. That's interesting. I don't know if I fully understand that. Well, but like, I feel like actors should be able to have conversation feel natural, because you'll have somebody else reading the other line to them, even if they're not in the same room recording. Um, so, so I don't think it's that the actors can't act because they're in a separate room having, having dialogue. Um, because other actors in other games can do that and not have it feel stilted. And this game has still non-stilted writing and non-stilted performances and other actors have done non-stilted stuff. I feel like this is intentional. It's interesting. I don't know. And it does... It does, as you say, Sleeping Bee, it does make it so that we feel closer to the old ones and we, fe we feel a disconnect. We feel the massive distance between us and Aloy's time. Like, it's not just sort of our time, but in the future. It, it feels really different. Um, so I'm going to go over through this again because Osirin, I aren't you? didn't... Here, I'm just an outlander. Osirin women. No. Well then, in, the, in claim, the claim where we're from, we don't own property. We become it. It is what it is. Because, like, what, what I'm wondering here is, like, is she saying that they become the possession of their husband when they get married? Or is she saying that they marry a, a career path? I'm wondering. Um. Because it, it feels like they become... Uh, like, I don't know, because my initial reaction to that, which is why I was like, did I misunderstand that, is like, do they, do they become property of the person that they marry? Um, but then the way she talks about if you want to marry the blade, basically. So I wonder, like, how that works. Like, yeah, yeah, like the, the particular, prof like, professions that she cites make it sound like they, be they marry a profession rather than being themselves. They serve a role. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Let's hear about the Karja. The Karja... I'm not sure what to make of them yet. Some say under those feathered helmets, there's more feathers. <laughs> but they do all right by me. <laughs> Apart from closing the valley every time the wind blows. Well, when it's open again, you can see Meridian from the fort walls. It's that close. No, it's that big little spark. You can't miss it. They'd hate that. If you do, don't go further west than the Great Lake, or you'll meet the wrong kind of Karja. I'm really curious about that. I know Chrono, she's really great, isn't she? What do you mean, the wrong kind of Karja? You've been done up tight as a bolt in Norland, haven't you? <laughs> the Karja are still at war, only now it's with each other. Oh. The winners, those are the Sun Karja. And the losers, the ones who liked the old ways, they're the shadow. Okay. The shadow, Karja. And they went further west? We're gonna have to fight to them. To squat in the old border forts on the edge of the Sundom. Those Karja boys love building forts. 
Oh my god, I love how dismissive she is of them. I also just love that they say that under the feathers there's more feathers. It's just, it's so great because that's not an idiom that we have, but you know exactly what they mean. Yes, it's a sundom, not a kingdom. Well, because, like, no king rules it, the sun rules it. Makes perfect sense, actually. So, what did you hear about the Nora? <laughs> Something to do with that nasty scratch you've got on your neck. I'm gonna find them. Sounds like a hard road to go down. Right now, it's the only road I know. So this woman can tell that Aloy's been wounded and assumes that it's probably got something to do with that fight. So interesting. Thank you, Jira. You've been kind. I'm Aloy. Can't guarantee I'll stop calling you Little Spark. Stop by again when the fort opens, won't you? I absolutely will. You are awesome. She's really cool. Okay. Damn frigid, isn't it? Are you hitting on me? Is that what that is? I hear the Nora are pretty good at making use of machine parts. Not, you know, Osiram good, but... <laughs> so there are Osiram in the Sundom now. I get up, I work, same as always. Huh. Ursa was the toughest woman to ever come out of the claim. Hate to think what'll happen now she's gone. Ursa? She's gonna be significant. Huh. It is interesting. I know that I'll have answers to my questions more as I as I keep playing, but uh Okay, so if I sell these, do I sell these for more if I sell them versus if I break them down? I should I'm so bad with names I don't remember, honestly. I should just put some of these in my stuff, shouldn't I? I should just do it. I just don't want to commit to it and then change my mind, you know? 27, just fire. Fire and freeze. I don't know, man, I don't know. I just, I don't have a ton of them. So. Yeah, I figured out the color coding, I just... Like, it's clear which ones are weaker and which ones are stronger. Breaking down gives you half the cell value. Okay. What's the deal with the sister, though? We're supposed to find her, right? Aren't we supposed to meet up with her? Aren't we supposed to meet up with the sister? Didn't he say Didn't he say he had a sister and I was like, oh, we're going to meet the sister? I ain't with a bod, but this Sun King business is asinine. No man rules me, I'll tell you that. See? Was that... Was that one of the os the the Osirum? Because if so, like, no man rules me. Does that mean like they're not owned? The they burning. they marry their job. Nuke all the green ones. Okay. Ain't the Karja son supposed to love these lands? How's it so chilly? <laughs> I'm sorry. They're just really sassy. Especially because I don't use them, you know? And I guess I'll get better ones by the time I have enough points. Oh, that's the only type I have. Well, that's okay. I guess I will find more. <sighs> that's fine. That's fine. It's all fine. Six deer. There we go. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. It's all good. It's good. It's all good. There we go. I don't even know if I'll ever use handling, but whatever. Okay. Uh, 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 do I have anything else here to sell? Not that I'm, like, constantly filling up my pack with this anymore, but... I sometimes... Like, I've done it enough in the past that... I want to stay on top of it. Oh, 
Here we go. Rockbreaker, Behemoth, Stormbird, Thunderjaw, Deathbringer, and Fireclaw. I don't think I've encountered a single one of those. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> I think the Stormbirds might have been the things that I saw flying overhead way to the east. I don't think I've seen any of the rest of these. So that's cool. Fireclaw sounds like I'm going to love that. Thunderjaw, is it going to electrocute me when it bites me? Deathbringer just straight up. It's like, this one's bad. Behemoth? Is that going to be a T-Rex? I'm curious. Well, we'll see. I do love that you can't tell. Like, that's one of the neat things about the naming is you, you can't tell what it's going to be. You know? It's great. It's fantastic. As someone who doesn't want to be spoiled, I love it. All right, what do you got? Any new outfits? So the Nora Silent Hunter Heavy. This is what I want, but I have to get a bellow back heart. Yeah, behemoth. Could be it could be could be any sort of giant ass giant dinosaur thing. Deathbringer could 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 be a friend. maybe. Probably not. Shellwalker heart. Do not have that one. Be good for fighting. Ice Hunter one makes you strong against being cold. I want the really good ghillie suit, but I don't get the really good ghillie suit because I don't have. <sighs> Sad. Rock, you buy rocks. Why would you buy rock? Treasure box. Free sample. Yay! Special modification box. Ooh. Okay, hold on. Let us uh, go through our inventory a little bitty bit. Oops, treasure box. I got free sample box. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> Stupid rocks. I should probably... Oops! That's not what I meant to do. Yes, the rocks. I just, I feel like these are probably too good. I mean, I want the mighty bow. I want the culling bow. Don't get me wrong. It sounds great. Oh my god, the uwu bringer. Is that what we're going to call those when we encounter them? I'll hold you to it, folks, because my memory is so bad that it's up to you when we encounter a death bringer to call it the uwu bringer. I'll be really impressed if you remember. Okay. If we teach the people of Meridian nothing else, steal to my soul, we'll teach them how to hold their liquor. <laughs> All right, so they are the dwarves. Got it. Here's to Avad, huh? He may dress like an idiot, but he's made a place in Meridian for the Osiram. Is that the guy that we met? Stay busy, friend. <sighs> the Sundom has changed, but this work hasn't. So the shadows. Hello, I say she fought beside Bost and Vala. Yes. Greetings. I did. It's so interesting that you have like all of their different uh their different tents. Who here my old village just reinforced the outer walls. Must have been quite the project. Who are what are you? My old just You're fancy looking. Who's the fancy looking ones? Is it the Karja? Are you a Karja? Yeah. Yeah, You're fancier Karja. looking than the Karja. Karja my mother told me to steer clear of outlanders, but you seem friendly. I am friendly. So that one is Karja. Okay. So the Karja, or I guess, I guess it makes sense for them to be the fancy ones. You know, I wrestled her once and was sore for a week. Salutations. All right. Let's just see if there's any secrets lurking about here. Turkey. That's not really a secret. Training dummy. Also not a secret. Another training dummy. Okay. So nobody's lost I'll cell phone. Sleep well tonight. Here. Man. This is really... Oh, I'm going to climb that. I'm going to climb that. I don't know if there's any benefit to climbing it, but I'm going to climb it. You better believe I'm going to try anyway. We'll see if I can succeed. The Nora are led by their women, right? Is this one some sort of leader? <laughs> huh. How did I get... Can I climb up? There's... 
Is there anything I can climb up? No, that's, that's, that's nothing. This is the thing to climb up. How do I climb up you? Can I climb up you? Is this a thing? I don't think I can, actually. You don't have... Don't assume the hunt will be easier just because the land is warmer. Oh, look at that. I can just take... Oh. I can just take this stuff. Okay. Got some shards. Interesting. Look at that. It seems to have fabric from each of the cultures. Said he lost another caravan in the machines last week. Docked my wages again. <sighs> oh, good. Capitalism. We will fight the corruption till the last of us has fallen. That time will come too soon. Uh, let's be more positive than that. Oh, we need to go. That's right. We were going to go here. We're going to go try this. You guys ready for me to try to do some machine spirits grant you favor? Ah, okay. Machine spirits. We believe in machine spirits here, do we? Close the border where the corruption spreads. Goddess, forget them. Oh my god, the music here is beautiful. All right, folks. Time to do this. We're ready. I'm sure there's a way we're supposed to do this. It's not the way we're going to do it. Okay. Oops. Good thing I didn't fall to my death there, huh? Hello, turkey. Sun's coming up. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, I guess we could try to do it the way we're supposed to. Look at this. There's actually yellow things. Look at me. Look at... Look, I'm seeing the yellow things, okay? Do you see me see the yellow things? Are you proud of me? Oh my god. They don't... No, nope. Sorry, Eloy. They don't even have, like... Is this, like... This is like a Nora Brave sort of trail, though. Rather than, like... I guess the implication here, maybe, is that... The Nora Braves can use their Nora Brave. Go on! Go on, Aloy! Oh, okay. I was supposed to appreciate that that was going to be really hard. Oh my god. Here we go. Look at this, I'm actually doing the thing the way I'm supposed to. Oh, it is foggy. It is foggy. This isn't where I'm supposed to get, though. Oh, that is it. That is it. Okay, I broke. I don't think I even looked at them last time. It's called I Name You, okay? Some kind of figurine. I think it's the nuke. Hi, Lucas. Yeah, this is my first try. I will caution you, I'm very slow and methodical at looking at things, and I have a lot of things to say about everything. God, the music's really good here. So hopefully you're all right with that, because we are about to dig into one of these. Okay, so we've completed this set. Very nice. I got this one out of order. I name you and then my claim. It's an offering under a tribal mark along with a strip of parchment bearing handwritten glyphs. Writing. So are the Nora, then, I wonder, the only ones who, who, who don't write? Okay, Tektuk. Hold on. Tektuk is the one that wrote this. Okay. Signak, or the death of Signak, her chief son. Okay. Okay, this answers that question. Okay, I wasn't sure. Okay. Upon this peak, I name you my son, that which I could not do before my exile. Signak, chieftain of my Werak, thought your blood was his, but the truth was clear as the color of the sky, painted in your eyes and mine. As I wander alone in this foreign land, it is not Signak's death that wounds me, nor the memory of Illy, your mother, nor even the loss of snow-sheathed banner, my home, but instead the silence that lay between us, who should have been father and son. I paint my mark here for you and leave you this offering, though it will never touch the warmth of your hands. All right. That's kind of beautiful. I have been doing my best to explore as much of the optional lore as I can realistically find. I also like to kind of piece things together. I also have a tendency to talk about narrative decisions that they make with their writing style. 
um, and what they choose to show us and not and things like that. We had a conversation earlier today about why the chocolate box lore showed up around the Round Rock Amphitheater um, and also the intent, the decision to intentionally stylize to the point of being stilted most of the dialogue of the people in Aloy's time. Um, so if that sounds like fun, like please pull up a chair and join us. Um, I'm, I'm Lauren the Flute, this is what I do. I talk a lot about games and things like this. So I ha when I found this first figure, I, I, I misinterpreted the situation at first. Um, where I thought at first that this, I think I thought at first that uh, Tektuk was, um, was like, I cannot claim or marry somebody. Um, but actually it's, it's, it's his child. I paint this mark in sorrow and leave you this offering, though it will never touch the warmth of your hands. That is that is repeated between these two. Like that's a, that's an invocation of some sort. And I wonder if these are going to continue the rest of this person's story. So these ones don't have stories, which is kind of interesting. That's why I've sort of stopped collecting them. The vantage points, I'm deeply, deeply invested in their story. I was very excited to have gotten. I also love that the uh, round, the Red Rock Amphitheater has been rebranded. As is frequently the case with things these days, seeing brands take over what used to be like symphony halls and, and stadiums and things like that that used to bear the name of perhaps the person who founded them or some significant um, significant figure in, in that world. Now it's, you know, Coca-Cola Stadium and American Airlines theater and things like that. It's, it's they capture that feeling very well. Um, but since these, these are all the same character, I assume that these will all be the same person as well. There's many fewer of his story. And then these, these I'm interested because, okay, so got A, B, C, D. So this must be Mark one and then this must be Mark two. Yeah. I'm curious about this because I want to know who's writing the poetry. Summer grass is all that remains of soldiers dreams. Yeah, okay. <sighs> like it's beautiful poetry and it feels very much like a haiku. Um, but some, I just, I wonder if it's one eccentric person writing it, if it's an AI writing it, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. Oh, I mean, I guess this could be too Tektuk. I just assumed that it was Tektuk who wrote it, but I guess, I guess that wouldn't make any sense, actually, now that I think about it. Because, well... Because this doesn't tell us the name of the person who did it, so yeah, it would make sense if it were the person being spoken to. I don't know. That's an interesting story, so we're getting a bit of a bit of development. So one of the things that I do really, really like about this is that for all that the dialogue writing is in some ways really stilted and 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 alien feeling, the um the cultures themselves, oh, let's see if I can do this. Do I want to hit the interact button or do I want to hit the, I think I hit the jump button. Yeah, I hit the jump button, okay. Um, the, the people in the cultures uh, are relatable. Their, their conflicts are relatable and timeless, you know. I mean, obviously that's not true without, it, without exception, but we're able to follow this story of Tektuk um, because it's a story in some ways that we've that we've heard before. Hold on. Okay, cool. Um, because because it's because it's relatable. Because even without knowing what is specifically culturally taboo in the Vanuk culture, um, we don't we don't need all of the details to make to make sense of it. Um, oh, I missed this take all their supplies. Yeah, I got your supplies. Man, the water is loud. Or is there anything else around here? Probably not. Not unless I want to go over this mountain, which the game would probably tell me no. So we can go try to find this metal flower. 
Um, but so, like, a lot of things aren't... Uh, okay, so they're breaking down the machines. And I, I do wonder, though, what is taboo in some of these cultures? Like, the, the Nora have very, very, very strict... Oh, look at this. It's the rope. It's the blue rope that they tie on things. So the blue rope, just like the blue paint, that's how they mark it as Nora. That's their color. I wonder why blue is the color of the Nora. Because I don't know that the other cultures have, like, this is the color of their... Hold on, we're going to save. I don't know that the other cultures have this is the color of their things. It would make sense in a way. It, it would give us an easy shorthand of, like, where... Whose place is this? Well, it's red. Well, it's blue. And so on. Oh, well, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I should go down the way I'm supposed to. Um, but okay, so we know some interesting things. We know about the claim, which is where the uh, 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 serum are from. I haven't noticed a strong color theme among the other tent groups, really. Everything we had outside the claim owed oh, Ursa. Ursa, now that she's gone, is but versus the sister. How? What does it mean that she's gone? I'm supposed to meet up with her. I thought. I mean, I guess we'll 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 find that out soon enough. But yeah, see, like this, I'm like, oh, the Nora built this because it's blue. It's got the blue the blue ribbon around it. It's also got paint. Where's that snow? Well, I don't know. Okay, so shall we go get that flower? I suppose we should. It'll force us to kind of get some familiarity with this area. Oh, okay. I guess I should actually scope out what's down there. What's down there? We got a couple of watchers, which I can probably just smash. Broadheads, which I don't know as well. Those are the ones that I call longhorns because they are basically longhorns. Okay, what's the what's the deal with longhorns again? Uh, machine catalog. There's the longhorns. These are the longhorns. Have heavy runners that will bolt when disturbed. They must be dealt with silently or quickly. They are mountable. Oh, you can ride them. Oh, interesting. Okay. They have explosive things. Does that mean that I can shoot it? Yes. You can loot things from them. Okay. No, we can always see what happens. We did just save. So we'll figure it out. Go around here. See where we can sneak our way into this. Figure it out. Deal with silently and quickly, perhaps. Where is the thing that I want? Where are you? What do we got? Just a bunch of you guys. Watcher, watcher. The thing I want is over there. Hmm. Can I sneak around that way? And not have to fight everything? Can I... Oh, oh, you know what we should do here? You know what we should do? This. Hi, friend. What you gonna do? You gonna go cause some trouble? Yeah, you are! Yeah, blow him up! Blow him up, buddy! Yeah! That'll take care of some of my, uh... Alright, we're gonna wait for my override tool to recharge, maybe. Hi, buddy. Okay, so they're running away. Okay. That was a pretty good- that was a pretty good solution to that problem, actually. All of the watchers died. And those guys ran away. Cool. Excellent. Well, before they're gone, uh, where's the, the thing that I'm looking for? There it is. It's purple, so you can't miss it, but I almost missed it. Yay! Now, what were you doing out here? I will be looking at that in my notebook. But first, we're gonna get all this stuff in case those guys come right back. I feel like I solved that the way you were supposed to solve that. Hold on, where are the things that I 
that my little guy took out? Oh, they're right here. Okay. I didn't override for the longest time, and you're definitely supposed to override. And so Aloy tells you, like, by the way, you should override. Because it does seem like it is an essential way of dealing with some problems. So those guys got scared. Is there anything else in here? God, this is such a good song. Aloy panned for backseating. Oh, there's a... There's another campfire down here. I have to cross a river to get there. Hmm. Well, we'll just keep going, I guess. God, this is beautiful. Oh my god, the campfire is surrounded by these guys. Oh my god, okay, that's why there's multiple campfires. Got it. What if we did this one instead? Uh, okay, so we got scrappers, we got those guys. I should, I mean, I should probably become more fearless, you know? I should probably. I wonder actually, what happens if I, what happens if I lure a guy over here and then, and then catch him? Okay, hold on. Uh, I, oops, not that. Uh, this button. Oops, wrong button. Oh, fortunately, these guys are not really smart. What's the button to do that? How do I do that? Okay, am I too, I must be too far. Huh. Yeah, so I can't do that, so I must be too far. Okay. What if I threw a rock? What if I threw a rock? And I threw it... There. Oh my god. Amazing. Yeah, I, Aloy was really determined about overriding. Oh my god, through poor Jane, Dwayne Johnson. Okay, so there's a there's a watch of this watch was over there. Cause like I want to save at the campfire, but like there's dudes just everywhere around it. Nothing to see here, buddy. Nothing to see here. Oh, what's over here? What got down here? I could remove the dudes like I did last time. Hold on. What do we got over here? Oh, these are the scrappers. I want to take a scrappers. How many scrappers? Oh my god. Oh my god. Scrapper pile appears to be a little more than salvage. So we've got one, two. My goodness. Can I? Can I try? Hmm. I'm just gonna go this way. Campfire discovered. Oh my god. Yes, I see the campfire. So it's green if you've been there. Okay, hold on, where am I trying to get to? What am I trying to do here? Oh, there's another campfire over there. My goodness. All right. It's like, I don't know. I can just creep around. Nothing to see here, buddies. Nothing to see here. Absolutely nothing to see here. Oh, shoot. Oh my god, there's so many of them. I don't know what I found. But I am surrounded. And I don't see a safe place to hide. And I don't like that. And the music got super intense. And I don't like that either. So I'm just gonna go this way and ignore the drums that are really scary and go this way. And hope that nothing has seen me. Oh, rain. My feet will get damp. 
Okay. What have I found? Where am I? I don't know, but I went up because I was scared. And now I suspect that there's a different sort of trouble afoot. Can I clear out another bandit camp, I wonder? Because I haven't actually cleared out any bandit camps except for that one. Oh, that one's far away. So there's a corrupted zone I could take out and a campfire there. There's things here. Maybe I should go... Maybe I should go take out this corrupted zone. I'm higher level than that. Where am I? Uh, oh, like I'm right by this though. Actually, no. Let's let's do this. Oops. There's so many creatures that are scary, and I'm just going to ignore them. That sounds like a good solution, doesn't it? Simply don't fight things that are hard. God, the music got intense. The music's like, no, Lauren, you don't get to do this. And I'm like, yes, yes, I do. Where is the purple thing? God, there's, there's no, there's no grass to hide behind here. Oh my God. Okay. I think I can override you guys, but how am I gonna do that? Why is the music so intense? Oh, there's the grass. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna get in the grass and we're gonna find out what to do. Okay, can I, can I do you? I don't know how to use that. Highlight your track. Okay, what about you? Highlight your track. Oh my god, the music sure got intense. Oh, is it my usual shutdown time? Sorry. Okay, hold on. Uh, hold on. We're gonna... Are you alright with me making, like, a, a questionable decision? Are we alright with that? From the mind of a single long vine, 100 opening lives. That is beautifully written. And yeah, all of the metal flower poetry is, is in keeping with kind of what I think is happening there. <sighs> Questionable decisions are my favorite. All right, well, good. Special item. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. Oh, wait, wait. I remember what I was going to do. We're going to do this. Wait, do they have parts that can be removed? Hold on. Machine catalog. Scrappers. Do they have parts that can be removed? No. Yes? No. No, they don't. You can't you can't remove these, yeah? Can you? Wait, no, you can. You can. These are things that you can remove. Okay. Because we're gonna we're gonna do some terror blasting here. Deal with them quickly. Ah! Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez. Goodness, okay. I've taken out sawtooths before, but they're scarier. Oh, really? That was intense. I, but I know that I know that they're way harder than scrappers. Um, but the difficulty setting is standard, or should be standard. 
I've occasionally accidentally turned it to hard and then we have to change it back because I'm bad at reading settings. So it's going to take me way back because I don't, haven't hit a checkpoint in a bit. <sighs> Unfortunately. So we're going to have lost that level that I got. Oh, that is a ways back, isn't it? Oh, wait, no, I got my level. Oh, I, ke I keep my level? Oh. Okay, well, maybe that wasn't so bad then. Okay, so those guys will probably still be mad at me when I get there, though. So that'll be fun for future Lauren to deal with. So there we go. That is one way of getting to a save point at the end of my stream. Don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I thought, oh, I guess I didn't, I didn't actually go to that one because it was surrounded by things. So we have a bunch of choices here. <laughs> yes, fast travel indeed. A bunch of choices of things we can do that might be interesting. We're not going to get a whole bunch of data points until we hit wherever the next city is because those seem to collect in areas unsurprisingly that were inhabited by large numbers of the ancient ones because somebody's got to have left their cell phone lying around um so haven't really gone super far so we did we did have a lot happen we really did i feel like this was a pretty uh i feel like this was a pretty pretty exciting stream I think we, at least as far as like things done in the game, I don't know if we did story quest stuff much, but like we did, a, uh, well, we did encounter that town. That town was good and interesting. We managed to finish that up, talk a bit about some Banuk, talk about some storytelling. Oh, we went in and we found the Mewtwo armor. That's true. We found the Mewtwo armor. And we, f we found Chrono's new dwarf waifu. That's correct. <laughs> um, yeah, that was pretty fun. That was pretty fun. I like being able to like do a few things a stream. Um, I do want, oh my God, there's a vantage point on the way. We're gonna absolutely get that. Maybe I'm gonna stop doing silly things for a bit and try to get to that next vantage point. Um, your dwarf who oh my god chrono that's terrible and amazing i wonder why this is here though you know it's like all by itself it doesn't seem like it links to anything this one is hard to get to so perhaps this is an easier an easier one to get to so maybe we'll go do that i don't know and then take that route around here maybe this is an easier path because watchers are certainly easier than scrappers not scrappers sawtooths uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, next time I think we'll figure that out. Yeah, and we'll continue slowly progressing the plot. My primary concern is making sure that I don't miss any vantage points because I am deeply invested in the vantage point story. It's interesting, like, I feel like I found, like, I don't even know what scanned glyphs would be. Um... But, uh, but, like, I feel like I found a, a ton of these data points, but obviously I've missed some in Devil's Neck. Not Devil's Neck. Devil's, Devil's Thirst. Um, so I guess I should at some point go back and try to get the rest, because I really, really do desperately want all of them. Um, but, but, like, I feel like I've got... I mean, there's a whole ton of them that I haven't gotten, but, like, there's not, like, entire sections that I haven't gotten to, so I do wonder how they're sorted. It's, I guess, maybe by type, because, yeah, those are new, these are all news items, yeah. Adverts, so these are all going to be advertisements and press release and stuff, so that'll be, like, corporate stuff. These are just text logs. And the military directive, subscriber message, message log. These ones are more, more miscellaneous. I don't know. I'm curious about that. Yeah, it, I wondered about that, whether it was a dock, because it looks like a diving board to me, but it might be a dock. Um, so it might be interesting to check that out and, and see what's around that save point um, in that area. Um, but there is a lot going on in this world. Wait, is that, is that ruins, actually? Is that ruins? No, that's not ruins. That's just, that's just, that's just the land. It's just the land looks like. That's not ruins. Because I was there. They were not ruins. Okay, I got excited. Ruins are exciting. Huh, okay, so maybe we'll take the south road. What is that? 
What could that... Oh, I don't know. Huh. I don't know, but it looks like there's some man-made stuff around there. Yeah, I am curious about finding more audio logs, too, because there's not... There's not... You know, there's a whole ton of them, and I haven't gotten very many of them. So I wonder whether these are going to be story, you know... And I'm not super far in the story. I am, I am, I think it tells you what percentage you are through the game somewhere. I don't remember where. Um, but yeah, uh, here we go, 26%. But I'm pretty sure that that means I've been pretty thorough with data points rather than that I'm a quarter of the way through the actual plot. That's my thinking. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm mistaken. Shadow items gets noted. Interesting. The Shadow are going to be some big bads of some sort because, like, the Karja seem like they've been, historically speaking, kind of the big bads. Um, and if they have the evil, the evil, the evil Karja, um, then, uh, then presumably they will be everything that everyone hates about the Karja. I don't know. We'll see. I, I have some concerns about the complexity of the world and the complexity of the cultures that we're encountering. Um, namely, that they're not going to be very complex. Like, the fact that the um, uh, Osirum are easily easily summarizable as they're dwarves, but not dwarves. Um, and there's more nuance to their culture. Like, I don't understand what the deal is with, like, alewife and fishwife and swordwife. Um, so we'll have to figure that out. Um, but, uh, like... I don't know, they do kind of feel a little bit like fantasy archetypes, like the, um, the, like, s fantasy or science fiction archetypes, but, like, the, the, like, big, big city fussy, fussy people who are very, very cultured, um, in the particular way that they are, feels a little bit familiar. Um, the Banuk are clearly the more, like, connected to the spirits side of things, um, which I hadn't realized until they started talking about the, the, the soul of the machine or the spirit of the machine, which nobody else has talked about. Um, and the Nora are, are the superstitious law. I don't know. I just, I wonder whether everyone came from a cradle and thinks that they are the originators of mankind because there were these pockets of, of protection of, of humanity and rebirth. But I also wonder, we're running around basically the state of Colorado, which... I mean, if you're walking around on foot, that's very big, but it's actually not a very big percentage of the planet, you know? And so if we have, you know, this, this many cultures in this very, very small concentrated section of one small section, and I know that in the real world, there are a lot of different tribes and groups of people and nations and so on going way back. Um, and, and I don't fully understand, like, I don't have a sense because I'm not an anthropologist or, or a historian or, or whatever of the concentration of different cultures in one particular space. I don't know what's natural. I don't know if it's only going to be these four for the entirety of the state of Colorado. I don't know what the world is like outside of the state of Colorado. Um, I'm really, I'm, I'm curious. I'm really, really, really wondering how the world that they have built here that we're running around as Aloy can be scaled up to an entire planet, um, if it can be. Um, that's that's one of the things, like there's some things that I'm, I'm, I'm wondering and I want to have faith in them because they are really good at writing in a lot of ways. Just like I say, like the stilted dialogue to me seems like it's a very intentional decision because they have the skill to not write stilted dialogue, they do it plenty. Um, like, I want to have faith in them that the world is going to feel right or have an intentional reason to not feel right. For example, I, I had some issues with the world not feeling right in Mother 3, and then when I got towards the end of Mother 3, realized that the things that I had thought felt like poor world building were intentional, and there was a reason behind them that made sense, and I was supposed to feel that, like, limitation of the world around me. And I wonder whether Horizon Zero Dawn is going to do something like that. Um, I don't know. So my, my concerns are not necessarily well-founded because these are good writers, but I wonder also, you know, what are the things that they chose to put their main focus on? Because you can't focus on making everything perfect. And while the gameplay and the story and the writing and all of these different components in this game are really outstanding, 
more so than in a lot of games that tend to favor one over the other. Like those of you who, who are here who've played the game and only really focused on the gameplay and had a very satisfying experience, obviously, because you're here watching somebody else play the game. So it clearly stands just fine on its legs as a game play, as a, as a, as a playing experience. Um, but the story is really good, and I know some of you have come here who have like absolutely obsessively tracked down every last thing in the story. Um, and that's really excellent too, and so that's really cool that they've managed to do that. So maybe they haven't like skimped in like their world building versus their characterization versus their plot versus, versus their history. You know, all of these different components that go into it because of the way they've, they've structured this game. There's a lot of different things. Um, but the world building is the one thing that I'm most concerned about because something, something about it, something about it doesn't quite line up. Right. And part of it is because I'm playing in an open world game and I'm not accustomed to, or like, like, I'm not, I'm not acclimated to how one gets invested in an open world game. Um, it, 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 there's such a long distance between like the plot things that are happening um, that I don't know. I, I, I feel like there's no way I can be a quarter of the way through this game because there's no way I've seen a quarter of the story. I have no idea how that could be. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm curious about that measurement. Um, but it is possible that I'll play through this game and have the complaints at the end of this game that I'm not emotionally connected enough to the characters in a way that I would expect to be in a game story. Um, and that the world feels a bit superficial and surface level. Because these are complaints that I have right now, is that it doesn't, it doesn't feel quite... It feels very sterile. And they're really good at telling good emotional stories and they can have good emotional moments with their characters. Um, and like, like I said, like I'm, in, I'm invested in Sona and Varl um, and I'm fully willing to believe that I'll go into other towns and find other characters that I find interesting. It may be with open world games that because there's so many people, they aren't able to do enough with most of the characters for them to really sink in for me because I'm definitely somebody who would rather play a smaller game with fewer characters and more development. Um, that, that may just be a mismatch for me, or it may be that I've yet to come to the characters that really get development and are recurring and have like emotional situations and interactions and so on and so forth. Sona is the closest we've come to having an actual character <laughs> besides Aloy, who's amazing. Everything about Aloy is fantastic. I have literally no complaints about her as a character. She's just excellent in every possible way. She's so well done. She can carry, even if the game winds up, if I continue to have this feeling of almost like, like a superficial world around me and kind of superficial characterization, even if that is not an intentional decision that they're doing and that doesn't change, Aloy herself is still such a strong character and I'm still so invested in her and her feelings and her experiences and her growth and her development and her concerns and her, her fears and her hopes and everything that I'd go along for the ride. But it would be a shame. Um, so we'll see. That's part of why I think next time I'm going to try to, uh, try to push my way on through to the plot because right now I care way more about Mr. Vantage Point than about any of the characters in the game except Aloy. I don't know his name, which is fine. That's not the important part. But his story is way more interesting and has way more emotional connection than anyone else. I can't remember anyone else's name. <laughs> Except for Sona and sometimes Varl. Um, and I'm bad with names, so that's partly on me, but I think that is also telling. Um, like, I'm interested in, for example, everybody's bad boyfriend. He's an interesting character. I hope he shows up again. I should probably go fight some bandits so that I can encounter him again, I suspect. Um, but, uh, but I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm wanting this game. I'm at the point where there's a lot going on, but there's, there is something I'm missing and I'm hoping this game will deliver it. And I'm hoping it's just because of everything being spread out and because I'm wandering off and doing other things and getting distracted by these other really good things, because it is really good. I love that the lore is delivered the way it is. I love found object storytelling when it's done very well. And this is extraordinarily good. Um, but I, I want I, I want more of the plot story, I think. I want more of the character story. And so I think I might go through here, take out the corruption zone, uh, find the vantage point, because I'm very invested in the vantage point. And I think I might actually press forward to the main story, if you folks don't mind, next time. Make that our goal. Go here. Get to that. Will you be all right with that? Even if it means leaving some stones unturned along the way? Of course, if we find a, a city that has... That has data points. We'll go there, but um, 
yeah, I think that's what I might do. And I hope you don't mind when I'm when I'm when I'm critical of games. Um, it does not mean that I don't love the game, because anyone who hasn't been watching my Final Fantasy VI streams uh, for the Pixel Remax. Pixel remaster streams on Saturdays. Final Fantasy VI is my favorite game of all time. I love it dearly, but I will take it to task for its its flaws, which it very decidedly has. And that doesn't in any way mean that it's not good. Um, and in fact, I am often more critical of something when it is good because you can more readily see the parts where it falls short when so much of it is excellent. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's true, I can wander. You know, the world they've created is really, really interesting. And that's the problem, though, Narrator Way, is that if I continue exploring the world, I'm going to drop the main plot and not care about it so much. Um, and I don't like that. I don't want to be like, wait, what's going on again? Not with Aloy. I feel like Aloy deserves me to be interested in and invested in her adventures and what's going on. Um, and so maybe I am a quarter of the way through the story, which would be really, really weird. It would be really weird. I would have questions. But I guess, again, I don't play open world games, so I don't really have anything in this genre to compare to. Um, you know, like there's a reason why I didn't know how to jump up yellow walls, because I haven't played anything resembling an open world game in a long time. The last game that had the option to run up walls that I played was Assassin's Creed 1. <laughs> when it was new. Um, yeah, well, the rest of the game is good and some parts are bad. It's not that it's a bad game. It's that I'm like, come on, man, you're so good. You dropped the ball. But one of the fun things about that as a writer, as a storyteller, as somebody who likes to piece together stories myself, is that by learning, by, by, by looking at these sorts of things, looking at what's done well and also what good people, like good writers do badly sometimes, you can learn a lot. Does that mean I won't make those same mistakes myself? Probably not, but it doesn't mean that I know more about them. And that at the very least is very interesting to me. Um, and and maybe, maybe it'll help my writing, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious, is the, is the overarching plot going to feel a bit thin? Is the characterization going to feel thin? Am I going to have to change my expectations of it? I don't know. But I love the world. I love piecing it together as a puzzle. So far as like a puzzle, like a box full of things to stick together. This is amazing. It's everything I want. It's so fascinating. It's so interesting. It keeps giving me just a little bit more that shifts the way I see things. Like the revelation of the um, of the the first cauldron, the revelation that maybe these robots, maybe the, maybe the the artificial intelligence is, is doing things, maybe they're actually sapient and, and active and taking control and potentially are the antagonists or have been the antagonists instead of just being tools for humans to use and have set up in the past. Like that was. That's fascinating. I love it when things are able to turn what I know of the world on its head with something in a way that doesn't make me feel stupid or not observant before, but it's just, it's very clever. And the way they give it to you is really, really well done. The subtlety of things like the chocolate box log where it doesn't serve any, as far as, as, far, as I'm predicting, doesn't serve any explicit purpose, but it, 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 it introduces thoughts and questions and things like that, that it will build on. As, as, um, was it Sleeping Bee? Somebody said, it's a Turing test. And we don't think of it as a Turing test, but it puts the questions of Turing tests in our mind. Like, it's so cool. The way it's constructed is so clever and it's so intentional. The way that they understand the real world and the way that they, they extrapolate from it is so believable and real. There's so much compassion and horror and sadness about the, the problems in our real world and hope for maybe better like all of this is coming through so even if i'm like man i wish the overarching story was better at grabbing me or, or, or man i wish they'd been able to spend more time in the characters that aloy meets or something like that even if i have those complaints i can't complain about horizon zero dawn overall because i don't think that that is horizon zero dawn it's not just the linear story that you're following it's not just the characters that aloy meets and her relationships to them the way for example a traditional jrpg would be all of these other things that I'm just like coming to life like on fire talking about because of how cool they are. 
that's also Horizon Zero Dawn. It's an interesting experience. I'm not used to thinking about games like this because I'm used to like years and years and years of playing like linear JRPGs and things like that. It's a different experience. So if the overarching story falls flat, if the characterization falls flat, the game falls flat. I don't know that I'll be able to say that about Horizon Zero Dawn. I think I'll just be able to say, I wish they'd been able to do this better. If it winds up being a problem, which it might not, it might be fine. Maybe I should have more faith in them. I don't know. But yeah, I've managed to just talk about nothing for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, however long we've been sitting on the screen while I talk about this. I hope you don't mind. Um, but I really, I don't know, I find it really interesting to think about what things do well, what things do badly. Oh my god, Lucas. That is what I do. <laughs> that is what I do. That is... That is that is my my thing. I did manage in playing Hades. I'm very proud of myself. Um, I last last week I had sudden burst of inspiration, and then at the end of the stream we got confirmation. I got a hole in one. As I, at least I'm giving myself credit for a hole in one of, of figuring something out. Um, yes, we call it mini golfing. Uh, going back to when I played Final Fantasy X like four or five years ago. And I was like, oh, I feel as though this can be compared to a mini golf course. Hear me out with my terrible thing. But I was basically like, I think this is what's going to happen. And every time stuff would happen in the story, I started piecing how it would fit into my impression of what was going to happen. So now mini golfing is our term for Lauren is speculating often wildly based on pieces. So if that's something that you enjoy, like... Welcome, my friends. This is what I do. Earlier this stream, um, I was talking. Like, I'm really, really interested in how the pre-apocalyptic plot plays out and what happened and things like that. Um, I don't know. It's a very fun puzzle. I'm not really a puzzle person, but give me like lore bits to piece together, and I am in heaven. I will play any genre of game, pretty much, if you promise me that there will be lore bits to piece together. That's why, as somebody who only played JRPGs, I played Dark Souls. <laughs> as someone who who hates puzzle games, I played Talos Principle, one of my favorite games ever. It like this game, it has found object storytelling, um, and it does it very well and has extraordinary writing. It's a brilliant game. Um, so yeah, I like that stuff. If you have suggestions for other games that are like that, I am all ears. <laughs> I haven't, but Outer Wilds is on my list. Outer Wilds and Disco Elysium are the two that like I know I need to play because they're going to get spoiled otherwise. So when we eventually beat either this or Hades someday, those are those are next on the docket, I think. So <laughs> I'm just really slow because I like to talk about these things. Um, but yeah, no, it's really fun stuff. I really love it. There's a reason why we're sitting on the screen is because I usually wrap up at 10 and it is now 1030. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you for listening to me ramble about this stuff. And hopefully it's been interesting. And if you want, if you, and if you disagree, if, if, if there's, yes, Hollow Knight. Yeah, but Hollow Knight is a, Hollow Knight is a platformer without difficulty options. And therefore I'm really scared of it. Um, yeah, I've been told with Outer Wilds, literally don't even look at the store page. So I haven't, um, but yeah, if there's a way that you can engage in what I'm saying without spoiling things that are going to happen in this game but you want to talk to me about like the narrative and my concerns and things like that or asking like have you played this other game what did you think about the way it handled that like I was talking about Mother 3 earlier and things like that feel free to ask me um and I'm happy to talk about this stuff I love talking about this stuff so much that's why I stream three days a week to talk about it and I'm going to be putting together my first uh my first video essay about themes in Final Fantasy X if that sounds like fun that'll be coming whenever i've knocked a few of my other projects out greece i'm really interested in that one too because i know that my friends all love the music <laughs> and i know that it's an emotional experience so if we need a little one between some of these very big games that i've been playing oh my god i've been playing hades for i don't know how long and this one um i don't know maybe we'll we'll we'll, we'll take some suggestions for small ones that'll be like one or two streams even for me that's the challenge. Oh my god. Oh, Final Fantasy X. Well, I'm glad I didn't say anything spoilery. Final Fantasy X is what made me realize that I really like to talk about narrative and games because that's what I do. I have an MFA in creative writing. Um, and writing is my passion. 
And so I like to talk from that perspective, for better or for worse. And in Final Fantasy X, there's a lot to pick up on and a lot to comment on and a lot of really interesting characterization decisions they do and things that you eventually realize that you should have had faith in them before. It's really good. It's really good. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. I'd be curious to hear what you think of it. Um, but it's, I think it's an absolutely extraordinary game. Um, I cried my eyes out. I cried so much that there's like a compilation of people's reactions to, the, to a couple of sections in that game. And, uh, and uh, I'm one of the people that they picked because I guess they wanted to like be like, this person's crying a lot. You want to see someone cry this game, right? Here you go. So if you like emotional investments in games, like that game will make you cry. I, I hope, I hope, I love it, I love it. It was so good, so good. I should shut down though, folks, because we've been sitting here for like 20 minutes. Thank you for listening to me. I can't imagine somebody just wandering in and being like, what is going on here? So those of you who wander in and think that this seems like a fun place to be, thank you so much. I know some of you have have joined, like jumped in when I was rambling about the uh, the Nora uh, creation myth um, <laughs> and uh, and stuck around, which was really fun. Uh, so I know that it can happen, uh, but hopefully, hopefully you'll wind up enjoying. If you like what you see here, give me a follow. I do this game every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern until 10 p.m. Eastern is when I'm supposed to start and stop. Obviously, I am not good at stopping on time these days. Um, but, uh, but yeah, thank you so much for, for following me. Those of you who, I think there were, I think we might have had a couple of follows. Um, I also play Hades on Thursdays and I do the same thing where I talk about the story and piece things together and stuff. And uh, Saturdays I'm playing through Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster, which is one of my favorite games of all time, if not my absolute favorite game of all time. I am working on an audiobook novelization of it. That is how obsessed I am. Um, but I also take it to task for its um, flaws as well, but also like to comment on the things that are good about it. So don't worry, I try not to be too negative. Um, so if that sounds like fun, feel free to join. I also play flute. I'm Lauren the Flute, so there will be music coming up. We will be missing um, a stream later this month. I don't remember what day. I think it's the 19th, uh, that next month. Um, but I will keep you posted on that. I will be going to a concert. It will be very exciting. Um, uh, yeah, thank you all so much for joining me, though. It has been lovely to have you. Um, lovely to hear from you. Nice to see some, some new faces, but also always wonderful to see familiar faces. Um, as always, like, if you want to join our Discord or, like, hit me up on Twitter or whatever if you want to talk about this game, as long as you can do it in a non-spoilery way, I'm very happy to talk about stories and games. <sighs> but I think I'm going to make myself shut down here because otherwise I'm just going to, I'm just going to be talking all night and I've got, I've got, I've got a paper to edit. <laughs> I've got a client waiting on me. I've got my super top secret, maybe I'll stream it on Friday, the big reveal of my April Fool's Day, my April Fool's Day present to you all. Um, so look forward to that. And I will see you all, well, hopefully soon. <laughs> we'll see. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And I will. I'll, I'll see you later. I'm going to shut down. I'm going to do it. I've got my finger on the button. I'm going to do this. All right. Bye.